Art Museum. Affiliated stations present Escape. All of Fantasy. Inner Sanctum Mystery. Lights out. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Retro Radio, old-time radio in the dark, presented by Weird Darkness. Each week I bring you a show from the golden age of radio, but still in the genre of Weird Darkness. I'll have stories of the macabre and horror, mysteries and crime, and even some dark science fiction. If you're new here, welcome to the show, and be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so you don't miss future episodes. And if you're already a member of this Weirdo family, please take a moment and invite someone else to listen in with you. Spreading the word about the show helps it to grow. If you're here because you're already a fan of nostalgic audio and print, you'll want to email WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com. When you do that, you'll get an instant reply with links to download full-length pulp audiobooks, pulp ebooks, and old-time radio shows for free. That's WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com. Coming up, it's several episodes from I Love a Mystery, encompassing an entire season and single storyline. I Love a Mystery was a radio show that featured a mix of mystery, drama, and adventure. First heard on NBC West Coast January 16, 1939, and considered one of the best adventure radio shows ever, it followed the adventures of three unlikely heroes – Detectives Reggie York, Doc Long, and Jack Packard of the A1 Detective Agency. These detectives were based on Alexander Dumas's Three Musketeers, Aramis, Porthos, and Athos. Jack Packard's character is considered the best of the three. He was always the first to solve the crime. Doc Long, on the other hand, is the group's comedian, while Reggie York is the most physically strong. Together, they make money by solving mysteries. The trio met as mercenary soldiers fighting the Japanese in China. Later, they met again in San Francisco, where they decided to form the A-1 Detective Agency. Their motto was, no job too tough, no adventure too baffling. The agency served as a plot device to involve the three characters in a wide variety of stories. These straddled the genres of mystery, adventure, and supernatural horror, and the plot lines often took them to exotic locales. I Love a Mystery is generally acknowledged as one of the greatest adventure serials from the golden age of radio, a mix of humor, adventure, horror, and mystery unlike anything you've ever heard before. For the serial we'll be listening to tonight, Temple of Vampires, many of the 20 episodes were believed lost, but you could still listen to the remaining episodes and keep up with the story but the missing episodes were either found or recreated with different actors in order to fill out the series, so you might be surprised that some episodes sound cleaner than others or sound much worse than others. Still, we have the entire story now, and it's a classic. Now bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness as we listen to I Love a Mystery from 1940 and Temple of Vampires. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery. adventure thriller, Temple of Vampires. The 
Turn those propellers over again, Reggie. Right do. All right, all right, hold it. Fella, this is what I call an airplane job. Boy, if it ain't. Well, that's all we can do this afternoon. What time is it? About six o'clock. Well, let's call it a day. Come on down, Reggie. Right now. Well, here she is. Our very own airplane already for us. Why, it don't seem any time since we was a grousing around because we had to wait two weeks for the factory to get it ready. Now, these last two weeks have passed in a hurry, haven't they? Well, roll your sleeves down, Reggie. That's all for tonight. I think we'll be ready to take off by tomorrow afternoon. Don't you, Jack? Then look out, Central America. Well, we can't get out of San Diego any too fast to suit me after what happened last night. You mean Phil and Arthur using each other for shooting targets? Yes, quite. Forget it. We're going to have a busy time if we get away tomorrow. Reggie, you'll have to finish up the work on the plane. Mm, suits me. Doc, it's up to you to get our clearance papers for the ship and see to our passports. Yeah, I'll get them out and dust them off. Feller, I don't know when I've been so head up. Central America, doggone. Does promise a bit of adventure, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, it don't. Oh, I see. Hey, that's Sonny's boy. Well, what's she doing out here at the airport? Hey, Sonny, here we are. I thought I'd catch you out here. Mm, Joe, I hope there isn't any more trouble. Hello, boys. How's the plane coming? Fine, fine. We're pulling out tomorrow. Oh, I see. Why? Is there anything the matter? Very much the matter. Yeah, well, what? Me. Well, what do you mean, you? What do you think I mean? You're going to pull out and I'm stuck here? You think I like this place any better than you do after what's happened? Phil and Arthur and, and Leslie Marks? I'm fine. A bit like a morgue. Yes. Well, you three have been so swell to me. I I know it's an imposition, but I just couldn't help asking one thing more. Well, let's have it, fella. What do you want? Well, take me with you. Oh, look here. Hey, uh, we're going down into the Central American jungle. Well, I can't think of any better place to forget, can you? Won't you please? I'll pay my way and I won't be any bother. I mean, just because I'm a girl won't matter. Anything goes. What I don't like, I won't see. Oh, now, I don't know about that. Uh, what do you say, Jack? Well, we could use some more money. Yeah, we are going to be kind of short of dough when we get all our equipment. Oh, look here oh, now, Oh, please, fellas. please. You mean you'll consider it? Why not, if Doc and Reggie agree? Well, it, it ain't the way we planned it. But as you say, why not? Reggie? Oh, I say, a girl. Oh, Reggie, I... Are you going to... Oh. oh, I say you're not going to cry. I am too. I'm so disappointed. But I haven't said you couldn't go. <laughs> oh, look here. Will you stop those valley tears? Then I can go? Yes, crying. But I bloody well don't like it. Oh, Reggie, you're wonderful. <laughs> Reggie, son. Well, what? Doggone fella. But you sure are a sucker for weenie. Madagalpa. Uh, was that the last big jungle town we passed over? Yeah, Madagalpa. Fifty-five minutes ago, Jack. Then we should ought to be getting pretty close to Boaco. Boaco, Doc. What's this? Boaco, not Boaco. You don't say. Well, anyway, uh, ain't we almost there, Jack? Yes, keep your eyes open, Reg. We ought to be sighting Boaco any moment now. I know. Nothing on the horizon as yet. Is that a stopping point? Yes, I wired ahead from Guatemala City for them to be ready to refuel us. Well, if I remember my Central America, it ain't going to be much of an airport. No, they told me in Guatemala City they'd have to refuel by hand. Oh, you want to do any checking on the motors while we're down there, Reggie? That's just what I had in mind. We're throwing a little oil somewhere. We are? Oh, I say nothing serious, but I think I'd better have a look. Yes, don't take anything for granted. After we leave Boaco, there's nothing between us and 500 miles of jungle but the town of Huigalpa. <laughs> and there's no airport there. Wow, jungles. 500 miles of them. You sound as though you're looking forward to enjoying the prospects, son. Of course. Anything to make me forget that awful Richard curse and all those murders. Well, a little jungle goes a long way for my money. What happens after we leave Boaco, Jack? Well, we fly between the Huapi Mountains and Lake Nicaragua. Lake Nicaragua? Is it much of a lake? Only 50 miles long. 50 miles? Well, that's an infant ocean. A lot of Indians all along the lake, I understand. From the lower end of the lake to San Jose, Costa Rica is another 150 miles. And that's our destination for tonight? San Jose, Costa Rica? That's right, sugar, and we'll be getting in there around 8 or 9 o'clock. Yeah, if we're lucky. Should be still light enough to land without flares. Gee, San Jose, Costa Rica. Doesn't that sound like...
play fun? And then what do we do? Well, Sonny, then's about the time and place that I start looking for trouble. What kind of trouble? Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I know what kind I'm looking for. <laughs> yes. You'll no doubt find it, too. Doc, you don't mean something tall, dark, and lovely. Honey, the girls down in this part of the world have the biggest black eyes and the longest eyelashes of any girls in the whole wide world. Oh, my, my. How can you bear to wait? I can't, hardly. <laughs> And you, Jack, what sort of trouble are you going to look for? I am reserving the right to pick and choose my brand of trouble when we get there. And man, oh man, is there plenty to pick and choose from. Anything you want, from an ordinary gambling house brawl with cutting knives to black magic and native voodoo rights. Really? Well, you never saw the like of it. Well, Sonny, the last time we was down this way, Reggie almost got himself skinned alive, trying to save a half-breed girl from an Indian sacrifice. Did you save her, Reggie? No. Nope. But, Doc, that wasn't near San Jose. That was in the back country, further east. Oh, sure, of course it was. But it's all the same in this part of the world. Stuff not only happens, it comes right up and smacks you in the face. You boys must know a side of Central and South America I never knew. You've been here before? Yes. Of course, I always stuck pretty civilized areas. Well, uh, Doc's laying it on pretty thick. The average traveler's as safe in Central America as he is in his own doorstep. you got to go looking for trouble here, the same as in any other part of the world. Uh-huh. What about you, Reggie? Me? Yeah. What sort of trouble are you going to look for tonight? Oh, look, I think I'll take it as it comes. I think I'm going to feel cheated, however, if I don't find somebody who wants to do a bit of brawling sailor fashion. A brawl? Why, Reggie, and you look so gentlemanly. What would make you want to fight? Money, politics, women. Oh, look here, does one need a reason? Oh, my goodness. What sort of men have I got mixed up with? Didn't you ever daydream, Sonny? Oh, so this is daydreaming. What kind of trouble are you be wanting? Oh, I hadn't thought. Let's see. Are the men as handsome as the girls are beautiful? And you'd better forget that. Why, Jack, why? Well, we're going to have other things to do besides look after you. Yeah, honey, we're going only going to have one night in Costa Rica. We don't want to spend all our time down here saving you from a fate worse than death. Oh. Well, you heard me. Now, now, you boys look here. You pay attention to your own brand of trouble. Let me take care of mine. Right, I'll buy that. And see that you remember it. All right. Jack, hmm? Guaco coming up. Good. Can you spot the airport? Mm, not yet. Do you mind taking a squint through the glasses? Oh, here they are. Oh, thanks. Looks like quite a place. Yeah. How queer the way it seems to be laid right down in the middle of the wilderness. Now, I've got it, Reggie. Fields right straight ahead. Uh, on this side of the town? Yes, better start dropping down. Down we go. Watch it, Sonny. Uh-huh. How long will we be here? Not more than 20 minutes, I hope. Well, just long enough to stretch my legs. And my stomach's telling me it's time to eat. Me too. I hope they have better coffee than we got in Guatemala City. I'd better circle the strip to get the feel of the port. Seems to be a bit small for a ship this size. Good idea. Yeah, I see they're expecting us. They've got a stack of five-gallon cans of gasoline out on the field. You mean they pour the gasoline in five gallons at a time? That's how they do it down here. All right, hang on. Here we go down. Hold everything. Right up alongside the cans of gas. Right on. So far, so good. Yep. Open her up, Doc. Everybody out. And a pleasure it is. You folks go ahead. I'll supervise the refueling. Hey, that's no fun. Go ahead, Doc. You and Sonny hunt up something to eat. I'll help Reggie check the oil pumps. Okay. Come on down, Sonny. Ooh. Well, I'm stiffer than I thought I was. Jump. I'll catch you. All right. Here I come. I got you. And I never held a prettier arm full of fluff and feathers. Oh, put me down, you leg. Now, why'd you have to say that? Doc, you're shocking the natives. What, do them good, if you ask me? Oh, Doc, you fool. Well, you insist. <laughs> ah, there you are, on your feet. And not a bad arm full of girl, if anyone should ask. Did you just notice? Yes, sir, I'm beginning to wonder where you've been all my life. Don't tell me I roused the sentimental Texas boy in you. Well, something went and made my heart go flip flat, flip flop, Doc, not flip. Flat. Jack, you wasn't supposed to be listening. Yeah? Yeah. Never mind. It wasn't important. What do you mean it wasn't important? Of course it was important. And I thought you two were looking for a place to get some food. Well, where are you going, fella? Well, I got to take care of the clearance papers and pay for this gas thing. I'll join you later. Well, how about it, Sonny? Oh, yeah. I'm crazy to look around. Okay, come on. Yeah, we won't see any of the town, I guess. No, it's over that way. <laughs> and look yonder at the Indians in blankets are squatting on the edge of the field. <laughs> They act as though they didn't believe their eyes. I don't reckon airplanes are one of the things they see the most down here. Goodness. Positively hot. <laughs> Lady, you're in the tropics now. I know. 
It's like a new world. Down here on the ground, Boaco looks more than ever like it was carved out of the wilderness. And what a wilderness. Look at the jungle all about us. Yeah, stuff sure grows down here. It looks so rank and, and deadly. Every plant trying to strangle the life out of every other plant. Murder in plant life, huh? Yeah, that's just what it looks like. Vicious, unwholesome murder. Hey, here. This looks like it'd be an eating joint. Shall we try it? Oh, Doc. It's dirty. Of course it's dirty. We don't have to eat the dirt, do we? Well, if we don't get something besides food in here, I'll be surprised. Well, let's have a look anyway. Door open. No screens. Flies everywhere. Hi, friend. Uh, would you maybe have some coffee? Eh, hey, sure. I got coffee. Then we'll have two coffees. Uh, what else you have on the menu? Uh, beans. Want any beans, son? Oh, for heaven's sake, no. This kind of weather? But what else you have besides beans? You don't like beans. No, neighbor, we don't like beans. What else you got? Maybe you like some frijoles. Frijoles? What you mean, frijoles? That's just south of the border for beans. Sure it is. Is that all you got in this black plant? Frijoles, beans, what more is there? <laughs> I guess we're going to take beans and like it. Hey, you got any bread? Tortillas. Yeah? Well, look, is this the only eating place around here? Yeah, what's the matter, you say that? What's the matter with this place? Well, fella, it is kind of dirty now, ain't it? You got to admit that. You say this place is dirty? That's right. I say this place is dirty. Sure it's dirty. Who cares? <laughs> you win, mister. Give us tortillas, frijoles, and coffee. Ah, now you talk sense. You gringos make me sick to my stomach. All the gringos make me sick to my stomach. Well, I guess we're all ready to take off now, Jack. All right, pile in. Doc shifted at the controls. Yeah, close her up. Let's get going. Hey, Sonny, what did them beans do to you? They give me indigestion plus heartburn plus the hiccups plus one. I hardly touched them. But it was good coffee. All set, Doc. Let her go. Okay. Watch it. Hold your hat, kid. Here we go. Folks can relax and sleep off your beans. You know, I like that stop best of all. I really got the feel of the jungle tropics. Lazy and dreamy, just a little bit rotten and dangerous. Yeah, that's life in the tropics as she has lived. Our first real Hello, tape. everybody. What's that? I just said hello. Jack, I say a valley infant. Why, Jack, it's a little boy. Oh, where did you come from? Back in there. Back in the luggage compartment? Oh, look here. We've got a blooming stowaway. Where did you get on this plane? Back in San Diego. You've been on this plane since we left San Diego? Sure. But, little boy, where are your mother and father? I haven't got any mother. My father's back in San Diego. This is great. But don't you know you shouldn't have done this? Your father must be terribly worried. Oh, no, he isn't. He put me in here. Your father put you in this plane? Uh-huh. He gave me a package of sandwiches and told me to stay here until I got hungry. You you mean your father abandoned you? I don't know. He just said to stay in there till I got hungry. Well, what are you going to do now? Well, what is there to do? And if we land in San Jose, we'll take him to the American consul. Will he see that he gets back to the United States? Well, he'll have to. Hey, what's your name? Hermie. Hermie what? That's all, just Hermie. But Hermie, what's your father's name? His name's Hermie, too, and I'm hungry and thirsty. Well, of course you are, darling. All right, Reggie, break out some cheese and crackers. And some of that chocolate. Oh, Joe, wet nurse to an unwashed juvenile. Oh, shame on you, Reggie. How old are you, darling? I'm seven. I'm, please don't call me darling. Well, of course I won't. I'm a man, and women are no good. Oh? <laughs> and put that in your pipe and smoke it, Sonny Richards. Yeah, well, that puts me in my place, all right. <laughs> Boy, I sure do like airplanes. Oh, you do? Yeah. When Pop said I was going for an airplane ride, I just about busted my britches. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you are, honey. Sink your teeth into this. Thanks. I guess you fellas are a bunch of right guys. <laughs> Some adventure, huh, Jack? Yeah, great. Yes, sir. Now, if we only had a big box of sand, we could start a kindergarten.
adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at the same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Forson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York, with Sarah Fussell as Hermie. speaking, this is the Mutual Broadcasting System. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller, Temple of Vampire. Find a body of water, all right. Where are we now? Well, Hermie, over on our right is Lake Nicaragua. Uh huh. And those snow capped mountains on our left are the Whoppies. And what's down below us? Jungles, my fine young stowaway. What, tigers and bears in them? Well, I don't know about tigers and bears, but there's plenty of spotted panthers and snakes. Not to mention a few alligators and wild Indians. Indians? Is our Indians? And how? With paint on their faces and bows and arrows up both sleeves. What sleeves? Couldn't we go down there? Hey, I hope not. Uh, couldn't we, sir? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. And looky, how about you calling me Doc, which is my name? All right, Doc. Why can't we go down, Doc? Well, didn't you just hear Sonny say she didn't want to? Oh, Sonny's a girl. Hey, listen, Hermie. Do you have to keep throwing that up to me? Well, you are a girl, ain't you? Well, can I help it? Girls ain't good for very much. You're not like men. <laughs> I say the lad has a philosophy about women, apparently. Then I suppose you agree with it. Well, I no. Did I say so? I don't like that dirty laugh. <laughs> well, what's your name, Doc? I'm Reggie York. Huh. I don't like that name very well. Don't you now? Yeah. What's yours? Mine? You can call me Sonny. Okay. What's his? That fellow over there. That's Jack. He don't like me, does he? You don't think so? Jack? Why, of course he does. No, he don't. He don't talk to me. Now, you hear that, Jack? Hmm? You asleep? No. Hermie here says you won't talk to him. Did he? Oh, Jack, Hermie's a good little guy. I don't doubt it. Well, look at what's come over Jack. Looks like he's got a fit of molly grubbles. And all on account of Hermie. Are you piloting this ship? That's right, I am, that. Now, how about keeping your mind on the controls? Hey, you have got it bad, haven't you? Say, what does a fellow do when he wants to rest in an airplane? Getting tired? Huh? Who said anything about getting tired? Men don't get tired. That's right, Hermie, but men do have to rest sometimes. Sure, that's what I mean. Well, you see that blanket on the floor back there? Yeah. Well, when I need a rest, I go back and lie down on that. Is it okay for me? It most certainly is, any time you feel like it. Thanks. I guess I will. Jack? Yes? You don't like kids? Sure. Then what's the matter? Did anyone say there was something the matter? Oh, but Jack, it's just as you said. The minute we reach San Jose, we can turn him over to the American consul. That's right. Then why cut him dead for the three or four hours he's with us? Well, maybe it's the kid, maybe it isn't. All I know is that something's wrong. Wrong? Just, just what are you driving at, Jack? I don't know. Just a feeling. You mean you sw- smell trouble, fella? Yeah. You hear that, Reg? Quiet, and I don't like it a little bit. Well, what's the matter with you folks? Well, it ain't nothing to be laughed at. When Jack smells trouble, it means something. Oh, what are you talking about? You mean you boys are superstitious? Feminitions. Men who live by their wits stay alive by paying attention to their hunches. Oh, for Pete's sake. We find a seven-year-old boy stowed away on the plane, and immediately everybody acts like the end of the world has come. How does the instrument board look, Jack? Nothing out of kill to here. How far would you judge we are from the lake? 
25 miles, I guess, offhand. I've been keeping my middle course about halfway between the mountains and the lake. Uh-huh. How about getting over near the lake? You say so. But, Jack, what's that for? It, it takes us off our course. Well, if we had to make a sudden landing, we'd have a better chance along the shore. Jack, are you being serious? I don't know any more than you do. Oh, I think this is a lot of nonsense. How much altitude, Doc? Upwards to 3,000. Well, that's plenty. Mind if I take the controls? They're yours, son. You're welcome to them. Come on, slide in. Thanks. Oh, I, I wish I knew what this was all about. Look, sonny, a good nose for trouble has saved our skins more times than I can count on the ten fingers. That's right. Quiet. When Jack says there's something in the wind, keep your peepers open. Oh, Reggie? Yes, Jack? Get out the maps and look over the towns in this area. Before you can say Jack Robinson. Oh, and Reggie? Yes? When you're finished with them, put them back in your pocket where they're safe. It's as good as done. You know, I ain't seen Jack worried like this, and I don't know when. Why does he want Reggie to put the maps in his pocket? Well, just for instance, supposing we was to crack up and the plane was to burn. Doc, what do you mean? Well, nothing. Only if we were to be left on foot, these maps would be mighty handy to have to know which way to head to. But, but, but you mean we're in danger of, of cracking up? Sugar, if we knew what was the matter, we wouldn't... Well, we'd be doing something about it, not sitting here talking. And it's all based on... <laughs> Just on Jack's feelings? Every smidgen of it. Nearest I can make out, the closest town is about 50 miles on the other side of the lake. Well, that don't do us a precious lot of good on this side. Yes, I know. Nothing on this side at all? Nothing on the map. I suppose there must be villages, but not important enough to show here. And supposing there are, what could the village? Well, any port in a storm is a good motto. I'll go up and tell Jack what I've found. Well... Isn't this pleasant? All part of the game, Sonny. You asked for it. Yeah. You want to make a bet? Well, I admit I do like my gambling. I'll bet you five dollars we land in San Jose on schedule and no trouble. Hey, Sugar, don't say that. Oh, why not? Well, haven't we got enough trouble without you throwing up a challenge like that? Honest to goodness, Doc. You and your Texas superstition. You don't get it, Sonny. It isn't superstition. That's how a soldier of fortune stays alive, being one jump ahead. It's part of our job to see what's coming. Now, we've all been doing it so long, it's, well, it's about like, well, a sixth sense or second nature to us. You don't mind if I think you're a little bit nuts? No, you go right ahead. Oh, you give me the willies. It's all so silly. Well, maybe it is that. Oh, what'd Jack have to say, Reggie? Just shrugged and said we were out of luck if anything went wrong now. No towns or nothing, huh? No. Reggie? Mm Mm-hmm. Are you as obsessed with this evil eye rubbish as Doc is? Evil eye? Well, whatever you want to call it. But what's so unnatural around of this world about a premonition? You don't think there's anything wrong with it? Not at all. Something in Jack is simply tuned a bit finer than in the rest of us. So put it this way, his unconscious has picked up something that isn't apparent to the rest of us. What do you mean, picked up something? Well, if Jack doesn't know, how would I? But you must have something in mind. What could his unconscious pick up that the rest of us don't get? Well, just for instance... The rhythm of the engines, the vibration of the propellers or of the wings. Something so slightly off normal that even his conscious mind doesn't get it. And yet it's registered in that subconscious instinct that warns of impending danger. Or again, it might be the weather. Maybe he got a whiff of a storm. And his instinct for approaching danger has been so much more highly developed than ours that he'd get it before we did. That's it. Well, at least that makes some sense. Where do you think you'd be going? Back to see how Hermie the Hitchhiker's doing. Well, most likely he'll be asleep. If he is, he should have something over him. Well, uh, anyway, we're doing all right so far. How you mean? Jack's maneuvered us right along the lake shore. Looks to be places to land in an emergency. It uh, looks it from up here. But uh, what'll it be like when we get down there? You think... Do you think maybe those clear places might be swamps? That or quicksand, if not worse. Just the same, it would beat landing in the top of a tree. Not if the swamps were wriggling with alligators, which sometimes they are. Well, that's a jolly thought. And that's say. one thing that Doc Long's mother never intended, for him to end up in the stomach of no alligator. Oh, oh Sonny, you uh, asleep? Poor little tyke. All tuckered out. Can you imagine a little kid like that? Taking what comes without a wink. A soldier of fortune in the making, I say. The heart of a freebooter. He looks like he had plenty of pushing around in his seven years at that. Yeah, I was noticing. He could do with some feeding up. Mm, took plenty of intestinal fortitude to stay hidden back in that luggage compartment for ten hours. No kid. A boy who can... 
Here it comes. Reggie, you mean... Fasten yourself to your seat. But she's caught on all right again, Jack. I don't know what she's going to do. Fasten your seat, Bill. Hold the kid to your left, Jack. Just a minute. I'll get it. Here, Sonny. I'll show you how to fasten yourself in. See, it's going to be bad. I don't know. There. That'll keep you from getting tossed around. Sorry to be busting up your nap, Hermie. Where are we now? The jungle's still down below us. In Indians? Yeah, I'll bet there are. Here, I'll uh, buckle me in and then hold you on the lap. I'm too old to be held on people's laps. This is just to keep you from getting bounced on your ear. We're losing altitude fast. Well, the closer we get to the ground, with the help of the engines, the less we'll bounce. You glad you came, Sonny? Yeah, doggone it. No matter what happens, I'm glad I came. That's the old fight, though. That's all I can do. You all fastened in? Let her rip, Jack. We're ready for anything you've got for us. Are we going down? That's right, Hermie. How about we see Indians? If that's all you see, fella, you're going to be the luckiest little boy in the world. Tell him not to hit any alligators. We're going down awful fast, ain't we? That's right, Hermie. And it's not going to be long now. Hang on to me like everything, Hermie. Anybody hurt? And why would we be hurt? That's about the prettiest piece of land in an airship as anybody's ever going to see. Anybody got any idea where we are? I say, take a look out the window. Holy jumping catfish. What is it, Doc? A doggone cathedral. Cathedral? Good Lord, a New York skyscraper rising right up out of the jungle. <laughs> of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at the same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Forson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York, with Sarah Fussell as Hermie. Frank McCarthy speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Temple of Vampires. Could you believe in miracles? Did you say miracles, Reggie? I said miracles. There isn't enough damage done to this plane to put in your eye. We'll want to make sure about that. I am sure. There's nothing a department store janitor couldn't fix up with bailing wire. Mm -hmm. The undercarriage seems to be the only thing damaged at all. That's all. And I'm just the man who conducted that up for an emergency takeoff. But what I don't understand is why the motors conked out on us in the first place. I think I have the answer to that. Well, then let's have it. Well, they were in perfect working order when we made the last stop at Boac. Oh, I made sure of that, as you very well know. All right, then there's only one thing it could be. The gasoline. Jove, so that's it. Yeah, I think that gasoline was watered. I say, you think the officials deliberately... Well, maybe the officials at the airport didn't know it was watered, and maybe they did. That doesn't enter into it. But I'll give odds that's our trouble. I say, what a rotten trick. But look here, Jack. If we're stuck out here in this jungle with watered gasoline... Well, we've got plenty of chamois. If that's the trouble, we'll have to find some way of straining it. Straining 200 gallons of gasoline through a chamois? It can be done. Oh, what a man has to do, he does, but what a job. Besides, strain it into what? Haven't got enough trouble without you thinking up more? Hey, I told Doc and Sonny not to get out of sight. Where are they? Behind you, down there at the edge of the lake. Oh. Have they got the boy with them? Mm, no. Hermes is hoping to see an Indian. <laughs> He'll be liable to get his wish. This looks like pretty unhealthy country. I sent Doc to look along the shore for signs of inhabitants, but... That was just hoping against hope. That's crying. No such thing as good natives in this part of the world. How far into the jungle would you say that old temple is? Mm, a quarter of a mile, I suppose. 
How would you guess it is, anyway? Maybe some old Aztec ruins. Oh, look, aren't you a little bit mixed up, Jack? The Aztecs were up there in Mexico. Well, all I know is it's not inhabited. You can tell that much from this distance. Oh, see, I've just had a thought. Maybe we're the first white men ever to set eyes on it. Mm. Climb up in the cabin and bring out three revolvers and some ammunition. Hmm, good idea. We won't try to work on the plane tonight, I don't imagine. No, we got to find out what we're up against first. Mm. What about a little food? Uh, a couple cans of tomatoes, cheese and crackers, and a bar of chocolate apiece tonight. Mm, I'll break them out while I'm inside. How's it coming, Jack? Oh, Doc. Well, where's Sonny and the boy? Well, they're coming along. Anything desperate to matter of the plane? Nothing smashed we can't fix. Hell, now, ain't that a relief? What about you? Find anything? Not one doggone thing. Not anywhere. On both sides of this clearing, that growth comes right up to the edge of the lake. And I swear to my grandma, you never saw such a growth. It's all along the lake, huh? A human being couldn't possibly get through that jungle of vines and trees, Jack. And even if we could, the place is running over of snakes and bugs and I don't know what kind of vermin. Did you warn Sonny and Hermie about drinking any of this water? I did that. All right, Doc. Heads up. Oh, there you are, Reggie. Put up your dukes and catch these. <laughs> now you're talking, Reggie. Shooting pistols and ammunition. Here's yours, Jack. I loaded them all around. Thanks. Put some extra shells in your pocket. I already have. And here's tonight's dinner. Oh, tie the cans up in a piece of canvas, Reggie, and then come on down. We're not eating now? No, we're going to do a little exploring. We're going to take the food along. You think there'd be some way of getting food to that temple thing over there? I doubt it. Well, of course there is. There's... Well, there's bound to be somebody living over there. Reggie and I just decided there wasn't. Huh? Well, what you talking about? You mean that you think that that's nothing more than a deserted building standing out there? Well, look at it. All of one corner's crumbled in. Huh? Well, look at it yourself. Yeah, now you call attention to it. Does look like it's seen better days. But just the same, well, I'd mighty well like to see what's over there. So would I. There you are. You want to take it, Jack? Uh, hand it down. Before you come, shut the door of the plane and lock it. Right. We'll do. Hey, what's that for? If there's any prowling natives around, we don't want them going through our stuff. Well, if there's a native in these parts, he's sure enough keeping out his side. I'll say that for him. There she is. Jack! Uh! Oh, that's Sonny. I hear her, but I don't see her. Hey, Sonny, where are you? You ain't supposed to get out of sight. Come here, all of you. We found the path. Found the path? Sonny, can you hear me? Yeah. Stay right where you are. We're coming. Come on. Let's have a look. This way. Can you see me? No, but we're coming. Mr. Jack, a path would indicate human beings. Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. You think not? It could be a path used by wild animals coming down to the lake for water. Here we are. Over here. Here we are. Over here. <laughs> Hermes turned into a doggone explorer. Got an idea he's on a picnic. Hey, Hermes and I saw those orchids hanging from the tree there, and we came over to look at them, and, and there was the path. I helped to find the path, didn't I, Sonny? That's right, Hermes. I'm good at finding paths. Mm. Ground's too hard to show any footprints. And doggone it. Well, it ain't headed in the direction of that old temple. Starts off that way. So, uh, well, what'd be the objection to following it? Doc, you now go ahead. Sonny, you stay in the middle with Hermie. Reggie, you bring up the rear. Right, but step lively or I'll be on your heels. Well, what's that for? Well, what do you suppose it's for? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Where do you think you are, on Main Street? Come on, Doc. Golly, Moses, you don't need to snap my head off. Take Hermie's hand and keep him on the path. Here, Hermie, give me your hand. No, I want to poke around with my stick. Take Sonny's hand and do as you're told. You don't like me, do you? Look, on both sides of this path is dense undergrowth full of poisonous insects and snakes. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. Give me your hand, Hermie. I don't see any snake. Hush, Hermie. Come on. I've been kind of keeping my eyes open for prints of one kind or another, but they just plain ain't in. Mm. Hey, Jack, fella, you know something? Well? I, I wonder if you should ought to talk to Hermie like you did. Is that so? Of course, it ain't exactly money out of my pocket, but just the same, I don't think you ought to. For Hermie's a nice little fella, and he can't help it being here. So what? Oh, I don't know. Only don't you see that hurt and scared look that comes on his face every time you lay in? All right, Doc, all right. Sorry. It's what I get for putting my nose in another man's business. Mm. Funny thing, though... You don't look like a man that I'd expect to find picking on kids. Notice how the branches of the trees are coming together over the path? Uh-huh. And all of them climbing vines and stuff, shutting out the sun. Yeah, and getting worse ahead. Hey, Jack, look here, will you? Just the same as going through a tunnel up ahead. You know, fella, if we're going to get much of that, we should ought to have a flashlight. I brought one. Doggone. Son of a gun. Horse, the way stuff grows down. Keep close together. Don't get so far behind. We're doing all right. Can I talk now, Sonny? Of course you can talk, Hermie. It's getting dark in here, ain't it? Uh-huh. It's the vines overhead shutting out the light. See? I'm not afraid of the dark. That's fine. Are you afraid of the dark, Reggie? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Jackie? Well, now, I'll tell you, Hermie. It's all according to the time and place. Well, I'm not. Only I wouldn't like to meet any old Indians in here. Well, I don't think we need to worry about that. I say up front there, Jack. What's the matter? You sure we're not getting in a little bit over our heads? I mean, if it gets much darker in the jungle like this. All right, we're coming at the end of it right ahead. Sunlight again? Yeah, that's right. We're coming out of the tunnel? So he says. Oh, that suits me right down to the ground. Every time one of those hanging vines brushes against my face, I wonder if it's a snake. Uh, I killed a snake once. Well, don't you go bothering any snakes down here. I'll kill them. Hermie, you hear me? You leave them strictly alone. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because they're liable to be poisoned. You understand? Okay. Well, there's the sunlight ahead. It's a lot cooler in here. Well, I'll take the heat myself. Come on, let's catch up. Is Jack married to you? Oh, goodness, no. <laughs> Why did we give you that idea? Is anybody married to you? Uh-uh, nobody. Then how about you waiting for me? Ha-ha, <laughs> that's the deal. Now, here we are. Off in the light again. Just a minute. Doc and Jack are down on their knees up ahead. Yeah, they act like they found something. What are they looking at? Hey, Sonny. Yeah? Jack wants you and Hermie to stay where you are for a minute. Well, what is it? What's the matter? Never mind. You stay there. Reggie, come on up here. Hey, but you've got to tell me. You can't just leave Hermie and me like this. All right, if you got to know, it's a dead man. Funny thing about it, too. There's not a wound on him any place. If there's not a drop of blood in his body. Hey, Jack. Now, can you tell me? You say there's a corpse. Hello. What's this? Just what it looks like. A dead Indian. Wearing not a stitch. It's oh, been dead since sometime last night. Indian for certain. No doubt about that. And not a very civilized Indian either. Look at those tribal marks on his forehead and chest. But, Jack, this business about him not having any blood. How do you know that? Color of his skin. Eyeballs. Fingernails. He's all bleached out. Well, maybe the Indians down here are kind of on the anemic side. <laughs> Take some of that brush and throw it over the body so Sonny and the boy can pass by without seeing it. Yeah. Good idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hermie wanted to see a real Indian. Huh? Well, he's not going to see this. No sign of what killed him, huh? No. There. That covers him all up. There. All right, Sonny, come on. Well, there's one thing. We know now that human beings live here, Bats. Even if they're wild ones. We also know they die around here. Uh, a lot of comfort that is. Come on, Sonny. We got him covered up. Just pass right on by. All right. Well, what killed him? Keep walking. We don't know. Jack. Jack, look ahead. Hmm? We're at the temple. Sure. Just stepped right out of the jungle. You know the courtyard? Yeah. So busy not looking where we were going, we doggone near run into it. Hey! That's a big house, ain't it? Well, the courtyard, all right. We're walking on paving stones covered with heavy moss. But trees and shrubs are growing right up through the stone. And I was the one who thought maybe folks lived here. Now, there is a pile of stone that is a pile of stone. Well, there's only one entrance. Shall we have a look inside? Well, of course we'll have a look. We've come too far to stop now. Go, go. Stone steps as grand as you please. And what stone steps? Fifty or twenty steps up to the door? And they reach all across the front of the building. Somebody put a lot of back-breaking work into this centuries ago. Let's go up, huh? All right, Ernie. But you stay close to us. Sure. You ever see anything like it? The way shrubs and small trees have grown right up between the stones. You suppose this jungle palace has anything to do with that dead Indian, Jack? I wouldn't know. Yes. Yeah. It's a little bit frightening, isn't it? Oh, who's afraid? I'm the first one off. We going in? That's what we came up here for. Come on. Big arch doorways, but not a door in the place. The doors must have rotted away centuries ago. Hey, golly. Listen, if I didn't hear a church bell, you can call me a loony. Yeah. I heard it. Come on. Let's go inside. Well, will you look what we found? What a tremendous place. Nicaraguan government could hide its whole army in here. Jack. Yep. 
Jack, did you see what I just saw? What the? Something just flew from one side of the temple to the other. Way up yonder. That'll be an owl. Owl, my grandma. It was as big as a man, and it didn't have no wings. What's more, it was wearing a human skin, and that's all. <laughs> of vampires. What are you talking about, I swear to you. I saw it, Jack. Up there, 40, 50 feet in the air. It started from that wall over there on the left and floated as easy as it pleased across to this here wall. It must have been a bird. A bird with human skin? Oh, look here. I saw it, doggone it. Only, uh, and, and the, the thing didn't have no wings either. And, and it was big as a man? That's why I said, big as a man. Now, look, Doc, you can see how silly that is on the face of it. Why, it's a good 150 to 200 feet from one wall to the other. I know that. And I still say I saw. But nothing could pass through the air that distance without wings. Well, if if there'd been wings, I'd have seen them, wouldn't I? And a bird as large as a man would have tremendous wing spread. Yes, and the flapping of such wings would make a tremendous noise in a oh. place like this. And more than that, there aren't any birds as large as men. All right, you smart fellas. Have it your way. So I didn't see anything as big as a man throw through the air up there in a hat, Doc. Well, it was almost certainly the deception of light and shadow in the bloom, Doc. You may have thought you did. Skeptics, that's what you are. You're just a bunch of dimwit skeptics. Anyway, what do we do now? Well, is Hermie all right? Uh Uh-huh. He's sitting out on the steps with a hamper of food, eating a piece of chocolate. Well, there's no use looking for inhabitants in this place. Jack, this is a genuine ancient temple out of some lost civilization. That's not past by so can you? Well, help yourself. What do you want, the 40-cent tour? (laughs) Well, it won't hurt to nose round a little. Gee, it makes you dizzy just looking up to the ceiling. Imagine a civilization centuries ago intelligent enough to construct a temple this size. Mm. Bit of a feat, all right. Must be a clear hundred feet from those highest rafters under the roof to the floor where we stand. And don't our voices sound funny? Listen. Hello? 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 <laughs> oh. Listen. Gee, that's the second time we heard that bell. And Dad, blame me, Jack. I still say if a bell rings, somebody must ring. Yeah, I suppose you think it was your wingless man-sized bird who's doing it. Okay, okay. All I'm saying is... Why don't you come up with a better explanation? Naturally, in a temple of this size, there must be bell towers. Bell's probably exposed to the weather. When the wind blows, the bell rings. Oh, so now now, now the wind's blowing, is it? It wasn't when we come in. Might easily be a hundred feet in the air. Oh, look here. Standing and talking isn't getting us anything. Well, let's move down, huh? All right. Fortunately, some of the roof has fallen in. Gives us sunlight. Ain't it the truth? Still reminds me of the inside of an old used coffee. Hey, come here! Come here, look what I found! Sonny, you mustn't get away from a party like this. Okay, but come and see what I found! Well, hold your horses, we're coming. What's so exciting over in this department? Look! Uh-oh, stone stairway going up along the wall. Uh-huh, almost missed them in the shadows. Say, will you look at this? Narrow stone steps climbing up the side of the wall. Going right up toward the ceiling. And no outside railing to hang on to. Must lead to some rooms or something up there. Can't just be stepped to the roof. Well, I know one way of finding ants. Fine. Shall we go up? We'll do nothing of the kind. Huh? What's eating you, Chuck? No. I vote against it. Well, what about it, Jack? What hurts you going to do to have a look? Well, some of us could go. Those steps are too dangerous for Sonny. Besides, we've got to keep an eye on Hermie. Well, he's still out in the step. I've been keeping an eye on him. Well, I'm not climbing those stairs. High places make me deathly ill. Well, then, uh, how about a couple of us going up and the other one stay below here at some? Well, you think that's a good idea? I mean, is, is there any good reason for going? How about it, Jack? Well, I would like to investigate those stairs, but I agree with Sonny. I don't like splitting up the party. Huh? Well, why not? Have you forgotten the body of that Indian out on the path? But you said yourself that didn't have anything to do with the temple. I said I didn't know. Yeah, just the same, Jack. We should know all we can about, about this place, and we will always be within calling distance. Yes, we may be here some time. We should investigate. Well, there you are. Here, here's three matches, son. Make them different lengths. We'll draw straw. The short straw stays with Sonny and keeps an eye on her. All right. Well, Doc, you're first. Draw one. You bet you. There. Ready? With pleasure. 
And this one is yours, Jack. Well, I got a whole match, so I'm one of those to go. Okay, Reggie. Let's be seeing your match. Right. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm the longest. You used to be on the Sunday, Doc, my lad. Wouldn't you know it? Jipped again. Well, I like that. Huh? You like what? Crying because you have the opportunity of my company. Yes, Doc. Where's your Texas sugar in? Well, all my life it's been like that. A conflict between adventure and female wing. Love a pulling me one way and adventure's hauling me the other. <laughs> Whoa, isn't that just too doggone pathetic? Come on, Reggie. Okay. We won't be gone any longer than necessary. Well, see that you watch your step now. Gee, I don't think I could do it. Steps are so narrow, they have to go single file. Oh, Doc. Yeah, Jack. Oh, stay right there. Don't wander off. And don't you worry none about us. We ain't going no place. You know, I wonder if we should stop for all this now. It's after six o'clock. Well, what's the time? No, it's down here in the jungle. But we're going to have to go back on that path overhung with that tangle of branches and vines to reach the plain. And if we wait until after dark... Oh, it won't be getting dark down here before nine o'clock. Yeah. What about getting something to eat? There you go. Sonic, will you tell me why it is all beautiful women have such doggone voracious appetites? <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. Well, you do. Every one of them. No, actually, I was thinking of Hermie. Oh, well, we, we brought some food along. Hey, looky up yonder. Where do they think they're going? Well, they seem to have come to some kind of a ledge or something. Hi, Jack! What's up there? Hello, hello! There's a ledge up here. There seems to be room. Did, did you say a room? That's right. A whole one of rooms all along the way. Or oh, anything in them? We were just investigating. Seem to be just bare stone rooms, like cells. We'll let you know if we find anything. They all seem to be empty. The maximum we're up about 20, 30 feet, aren't we? Well, I should say just about 30. Should we go up a little further? Yeah, seems to be another ledge up on. It's queer. What do you make of it, all those little empty rooms? As near as I can make out, they must have been the cells used by the monks or priests. Hmm. wonder what religion it could have been out here in the jungle. I noticed some queer marks chiseled on the wall of one of the cells. Had a, an oriental look. An oriental religion in Central America? <laughs> it does sound a little fantastic, doesn't it? Sure, Jack, go easy. Do you mind? Ooh, we're getting up in the air. Don't look over the edge, Ricky. Right? Don't worry about me doing it again. The second ledge is just ahead. Oh, quite. Oh, Sam, sketch in the knee joint. Yeah. There. There. Well, will you look here? Hmm. This ledge is even wider than the one below. And will you look here? More cells. They must have kept an army of priests in this place. Well, come on. Let's have a look at some of them. Jack, I'm really well afraid I wasn't made behind me. I wish they wouldn't get so far. You can hardly see them in this dim light. Looks like they're going up on another ledge. Doggone. They look a long way up there, don't they? Doc, I've lost them. I can't see them anymore. Well, they must have found some more themselves. But they said they keep in sight all the time. Now then, Sonny, Jack and Reggie's been looking out for themselves for quite a few years now. Ooh. And the stiff neck from looking up so much. Hey, you and me both, honey. Pink in the back of my neck. Doc, the bell again. Yeah. Doggone funny. We can't place where it's coming from, eh? Surely the boys must have heard it. Hey. Hey, there they are. Reggie's waving and pointing to the other side of the temple. Oh, I don't see anything over there. He, he must mean that that's where the bell rung. What's he mean by those signs? Oh, you just wigwagging and everything's okay with well, him. Well, why doesn't he yell? <laughs> Not much use that far off in a place like this. Too much echo. You couldn't tell what he was saying. Oh, they disappeared again. Oh, why don't they come on down? Oh, it looks like they want to examine some more of themselves. Man, oh man, what a splash the fella would make if he slipped off that leg. Oh, Doc, how can you even think such things? If you think that... Sonny, Sonny. Hey, Sonny. Why, Sonny, look, look at that. There it is again. Oh, Doc, what is it? Floating through the air like I see it. Oh, it is as big as a man. Do you see any wings? Do you? Doc, look, look, look. It's landing on the ledge where Jack and Reggie are. Sonny, Sonny, you stay here. Doc, come back. Where are you going? I'm going up and warn Jack and Reggie. Oh, no. No, I don't want to be alone here. Hermie! Hermie, come in here! Hermie! Hermie! 
Are you out of your ass for me? Oh, Oh. Oh, no. No. You are afraid? Who who are you? Where where did you come from? I've always been here. No. No, but there is no one here. Oh, yes. I am here. Who are you? I am Manuel. Have you seen Hermie? Who is Hermie? A little boy. A little boy? Yes, he's seven years old. He was with me just a minute ago, and he he just disappeared. I may say so. This is a very bad place for little boys. What are you? Why are you standing there dressed in those black robes from head to foot? Yes, very bad place for little boys. And not a good place for a beautiful girl. I wish the boys were here. What? Don't! Don't you come any closer. I have not moved since I spoke to you. You should never have entered the Temple of Vampires. What? Why did you? Temple of Vampires? You did not know? Temple of Vampires? Yes. But there aren't any such things. No. No! You know there aren't. They're they're just fairy stories told to to kill people's blood. (sighs) Blood? Oh! Don't look at me like that. You are mistaken. This temple belongs to the vampires, and it is not given to many people to leave this temple once they have entered. But, Hermie, I've got to find Hermie. You are outside the temple now. You are wise. You will not ever again enter, ever. But, Hermie... I don't think you will ever see the boy Hermie again. Oh. I don't think you will ever want to see Hermie again. Oh, no. No. Ah. Ah. She sleeps. She falls to the floor to forget. Tony! Tony, where are you? Yes, Reggie! Tony's gone! Sonny! Doc, I told you not to leave her! I know her, but I thought I had to warn you! Sonny! Sonny, where are you? Sonny, can't you hear? Jack! Reggie! Hey, here she is! Here she is! She's as white as a sheet. Is she hurt? Oh, what's the matter? Here, lift her up. Oh, no. Yeah, she must have fainted. Uh, 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 what is it, Sonny? What's the matter? Has he gone? Has he gone? Has who gone? Uh, it's just us, Sonny. The man, the man in the black robe. You saw a man in a black robe? He said we'd never see Hermie again. Hey, where is Hermie? The vampires. The vampires. <laughs> adventure thriller, Temple of Vampires. Seven o'clock in the evening on the steps of an ancient abandoned temple somewhere in the jungles of Nicaragua. Originally, Jack, Doc, and Reggie had intended to take their adventure into Central America alone, but the last minute they agreed to include Sonny Richards, young heiress, then, out over the Nick Rogwin jungle, they found Hermie, a seven-year-old boy stowaway. Engine trouble caused a forced landing on the shore of Lake Nicaragua near an ancient temple now overgrown by jungle. They found a path leading from the shore to the temple, a quarter-mile distant. And on the path, they found the corpse of an Indian whose body had been drained of blood, although there was no wound on him. They found the temple a huge affair, a hundred feet high and a hundred and fifty to two hundred feet square. While Jack and Reggie were examining some stone stairs which led up to the side of the wall, the boy Hermie disappeared, and then Sonny vanished. 
the three comrades found her semi-conscious on the stone steps outside the door of the temple. Don't bother about me. Find Hermie. Oh, look, he's probably just wandering around somewhere. No, you don't understand. He said we'd never see Hermie again. Never see Hermie again? Who said that? What are you talking about? The, the man in the black robe. Hey, son. No, Doc, listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. I ran out here to find Hermie, and there was a man. Out here on, on, on the steps of the temple? Yes. He wanted to know who Hermie was. And when I said he was a little boy, he said that this was a bad place for little boys, and, and for me, too. Well, did he say why? Yes. He said that this was the temple of vampires. Vampires? Empires? Joe. What'd I tell you, Jack? I knowed all along. Doc, you stay here with Sonny. Reggie, you're coming with me. Right on. Oh, now, just a minute, Jack. Don't argue. Reggie and I are going back in there for Hermie. Now keep your gun handy. Well, my shooting pistol's always handy. But, but Jack. You stay here with Sonny, and this time don't leave her no matter what happens. Are you really saying that you think that these here vampire critters. Well, you know as much as I do. Come on, Reggie. Have you got a cigarette, Doc? Tailor made or roll your own? Oh, come on. You can smile, can't you? Here. Thanks. Well, I need it. Like? Mm-hmm. Oh, Sonny, your hands trembling like a leaf. Yeah, I feel my hands. They're like ice. Oh, here now, Shug. Yeah, I'm that way all over. Well, that ain't no way for a person to be down here in the tropics. Hey, maybe you're coming down with chills and feet. Hey, shouldn't we all be looking for Hermie? Now, you said right where you are. Doc, I... Jack said for me and you to stay here. So relax. Well, I don't like it. Well, neither do I. Now, now, tell me what happened. Well, you remember we, we both saw that big thing floating through the air in the temple. Yeah. Jack and Reggie were up on the ledge. That's right. They were they were in examining one of them priest cells, and the thing landed on the same ledge that they was on. Yeah. Well, you ran up the steps to warn them. And being left alone frightened me. I looked around for Hermie, and, and he was gone. Just gone, huh? Yeah, and then I was scared. I ran around calling for him. Finally, I came out here on the steps, and then... And, and there was a man here. Indian? No, he, he talked with a soft Spanish accent, and he was dressed from head to foot in a black robe. Did he try to grab you or something? No, 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 no. He was gentle, and he was soft-spoken. The only thing was that I kept having the feeling that he was drawing closer to me. But the distance between us was always the same. He didn't move. Hypnotizing, it sounds like. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I think it was his eyes. And he said, we shouldn't have come here. That this was the temple of vampires. Now, you listen to me, sonny. I may be a superstitious Texas boy, yeah. but even I know vampires is in the same category along with witches and, and werewolves. Well, I mean, stuff stories are made out of. Yeah, they are, aren't they, Doc? There isn't any such thing. Of course, I've, I've heard of vampire bats, but they don't have the shape of a human body. Oh, I don't know. All I know is he said that this was the temple of vampires and that this was a very bad place for little boys and for girls. Yeah, and and, and, and then what happened? Oh, then everything began to go wrong. I felt myself falling. And the next thing I knew, I heard you boys bending over me and talking. Well, you don't know what become of this uh, Spanish hombre. Uh-uh. Well, there wasn't hiding her hair of him when he came. We come out on the steps. Yeah, but vampires, Doc. Vampires. Well, Sonny, the tropic jungles sure enough do breed a lot of mighty queer things. Just like those vines and plants out there. Kind of slimy and bloated. A lot of them are poisonous, too. What else? Well, where else but in the tropics would you find stuff like that? Doc... You don't suppose he meant vampire bats, do you? Well, I don't know, Sonny. But it don't sound very reasonable, now, does it? I mean, bats having a temple of their own. Oh, gee, I'm so worried about Hermie. Now, just hold your horses now. Jack and Reggie will take care of that department. Yeah, but supposing they don't. The, the, the man said that we'd never see him again. Now, look here, Sonny. Am I going to have trouble with you? Oh, what do you mean? Why, uh, this here's the sort of thing that you'll have to expect to get into if you're going to bum around the world. You asked for it, and you got it. Yeah, but talk to Well, we're going to always have plenty of things to think about uh, without you going female on us and making us things harder for us. What? Female? That's what I said. Tears and jitters and fainting fits. If you can't take it, you shouldn't have come along. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Well, what about doing something about it? Well, I'll try, Doc. Really, I will. Sure. You see, all the matter with you is that you're anticipating trouble. Why, there's nothing happening to anybody. Wait until you're hurt before you start yelling. Yeah, but Hermie, Doc. 
Hermit. It's just what I've been telling you. He's wandered off. Jack and Reggie will find him, and that's all there is to it. All right, over here. Can you find something? Yeah. Look here. Oh, so, more stone steps. Yes, only this time leading down. Down into the bowels of the earth to look at them. Charlie Black down there, too. Well, I've got my flashlight. We're going down? Well, it's certain Hermie isn't up here in this main auditorium, or whatever you want to call it. He is not. And they couldn't have gone up the stone steps along the wall because we were up there when he disappeared. So, here's the next place to look. But Jack, a little shaver like that would never have gone down into this darkness of his own free will. I know that. But if he wandered off... Well, how do we know he wandered off? But, but I thought that's what we decided. Come on, let's go down. Hmm? Anything you say... Lead on. Keep right behind me. Jack, uh, you're taking what Sonny said seriously. Such as what? Well, I mean, say that that chitter chatter about this being the temple of vampires. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, look there on the walls. Oh, look here now. What kind of juicy mind would do a thing like that? Ancient religious symbols chiseled on the rock. And whoever did that was having mental nightmare. <laughs> but they're graphic. Hmm. Yeah, leave it to the old pagans. They knew how. You mean there was a time when people would allow that kind of stuff? In the good old days, people did what they were told. They sacrificed everything from raisin garlic to their virgin daughters. No wonder their civilization disappeared. Now, yeah, let's go. Valley loathes and grass me. Well, that gives you a pretty good idea what this place stands for. Something pretty ugly. Are you insinuating this pagan religion is still alive? What does the name Temple of Vampires suggest, anyway? Perhaps at one time, but this is a modern world, Jack. Not down here, it isn't. This old temple's as isolated from the modern world as it was when it was built hundreds of years ago. Oh, I don't mind saying I feel a bit on the crawly side. Hey, look ahead here. Huh. Looks like a rat run. The ground under this temple must be a regular rabbit warren. Look. Three, four, five runways leading from the foot of these steps. Jack, we could get lost down here and never get out. Oh, I don't think it's that bad. Look at the arched stonework overhead. Sure, each one a stone tunnel. But Jack, it's not stone under our feet. Hmm. Dust of a thousand years accumulated over hard packed clay. Dust? Well, then, if there was anyone here, wouldn't there be footprints? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Well, I don't believe it, Jack. In spite of what Sonny said, I don't believe there's a living human creature in this place. Don't. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Take a look at this. Here in the dust. Where? Jack! Jack, that's the print of a human foot. A girl's foot. A girl? Yeah. Apparently, they don't give their women shoes down here. A barefoot girl. Huh. Jolly, huh? <laughs> yeah, come on. We'll follow this one. Girl in the temple of vampires. Oh, yes, yes, they're female vampires. Hmm? They're supposed to be very beautiful and seductive. Oh, that's crazy talk, Jack. Is it? As you well know, as crazy as a Jumba. What about the body of that dead Indian we found out on the jungle path? Oh, look here. Forgotten that. I haven't. Not a wound on him, yet his body was drained of blood. Are you saying this really is a temple of vampires and it's preying off the native Indians down here? Isn't that what's indicated? Hmm. Uh-oh. What's this? Looks like a break in the wall. Uh-huh. A stone balustrade running alongside our path. Th throw your flash over. What's on the other side of the stone wall? Let's see. <laughs> Seems to be some kind of a pit. Lower the line. Can you see the bottom? <gasps> Jack. Jack. Well, well. Quite a collection of bones. Human bones. All of them. Human bones. The pit is littered with them. And not such ancient bones. Oh, Jack. Let's get out of this place. Yeah. I don't think we'll find Hermie down here. A bloody yeah. slaughterhouse. That's what it is. We've been gone so long, Doc. If we're going to find Hermie, I should think they'd have come at night by this time. Now, look, you sonny. Am I going to have to give you another pep talk? But how can you sit there like that? Haven't you got any nerves in your body? Well, you should just ought to take a look at my nerves sometimes, sugar. Well, there's been times when they get pulled so tight I can play tunes on them like a guitar. Oh, stop trying to be funny. Yep, honey, you'll be a female, all right. There's no getting away from that. I don't care if I am. A person's got a right to be frightened and worried. Hold it. What? Oh, here they come. And now ain't you sorry. Jack and Reggie? But, Doc, Doc, they haven't got Hermie with them. I see they ain't. Jack, couldn't you find him? Where's Hermie? Don't know. You, you didn't find anything? Not of Hermie. But you, you did find something. Nothing. Except what I'd bally well want to forget. 
Why? What do you mean? Forget it. Did uh, Did you search everywhere, Jack? Well, that's impossible. It'll take days to go through all the passageways under this temple. Well, what are we standing here for? Oh, are we <gasps> Hermie. I wonder where all you folks were. Oh, Hermie, darling. Hermie, fella, where the blazes have you been? Hermie. Hermie, what do you mean by frightening us all like this? Hey, what are you crying about? Where have you been? In there. We were just in there looking for you. I guess you didn't see us on account of we was in a little row. Who is? Who was with you? The most beautiful lady I about ever saw. Lady? Yeah. She was all dressed in black. She gave me some figs. Honey, you didn't eat them. Sure I did. I liked her a lot, and she liked me. Did she say so? Yes, a lot of times. She said I had the nicest white neck she ever saw. The nicest white neck? Oh, Jack, let's get out of here. Just a minute. Then did she let you go? Well, a man all dressed in black came in. He took me by the hand and said you folks were waiting for me. The man? The man in the black robes? And was she? The black robes? And was she mad? <laughs> the man took you away? Uh-huh. He brought me right over to the door there and showed me where you were. Well, I'll be doggone. Honey, maybe you wasn't seeing things after all. Yes, and she had the reddest lips and the whitest teeth I ever saw. <laughs> From this place. Before I go, I want Hermie to show me the room where he met this woman. Sure, I'll show you. Jack, you don't mean you're going to take Hermie back in there? Give me a second, enough. Well, how about the time, Jack? It's past seven o'clock now. It won't be too long now before it starts getting dark. Well, it won't be dark for another hour and a half, two hours. Mm, take a look at the sky, Jack. Yeah, clouding over. One of those tropical jungle storms brewing. And yeah, then we'd better be off. We'd be better off here than back in the plane. You mean spend the night in in, in this temple? That's right. Best place in the world to get chills and fever in the tropics is to get drenching wet. Well, I don't need to get drenching to get chills in this place. Well, I'm taking Hermie back in the temple for a minute. Rest, do you want to come? No. All right. Reggie, you stay out here with Sonny. Doc, you come with Hermie and me. Well, suits me if you think it's that important. Jack. Well? No, this is dangerous. I know it. I, I have a feeling. <laughs> Feminine intuition. I don't care what you call it. Reggie will look after you. No, I didn't mean that. I, I mean there. Oh, huh, there's nothing to be afraid of. Look, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, girl. Come on. We won't be but a little. Here, Hermie, maybe you better take me by the hand. What do I want to do that for? On account of I'm going to like it better. Sure. Doggone, I ain't never got over how big this thing is. It's darker in here than it was. It sure is, fella. That's a storm and night coming on. All right, Hermie, where's the room? Over that way. You sure about that? Hermie, you must be mistaken. No, I'm not. But you can see for yourself, there's no room here, just the stone wall of the temple. Well, it, it was here. I reckon you're not only mixed up, but just plain turned around. I bet you I ain't. Did you go up or down any stairs? No, just went into a room. But looky now, Hermie, you can see as plain as anybody, there ain't no room there. I don't see any. Which means there ain't any. There's that bell again. Listen. Jack, that's stunned you. Yeah, that's the first indication of Reggie's storm. It didn't take no profit to smell that one coming up. Come on, that means rain. Man, will you look at her? Come down. Hey, Reggie, Sonny, get in here. What's the matter with you? Hi. We're coming here right with you. Hey, I never saw rain like that before. The mother of cloudbursts with trimmings. Trimmings? The rain's gone here and rains. Didn't I tell you to keep out of the wet? Well, the wall gave us pretty good protection. Sonny, Sonny didn't want to go inside. Uh, I didn't expect anything like this. It don't move around down here when it turns loose. Well, will it last long? Well, jungle rains don't usually, not this time of year. Well, we're not going to try to get back to the plane tonight. Jack, you mean we've got to spend the night here? Yes. Well, where are we going to sleep? Well, we'll figure that out when the time comes. Well, how about those monk cells up the stone stairway along the wall? There are stone benches in them. You mean up on that ledge? Hey, look, look. Oh, Jack. Did you see that? Hey, what's the matter? One of those big things just floated across 
from two on to the other, way up there in the air. I didn't see any. Well, I did. Up there in the gloom, must have been 40 feet above the floor. Did it have wings? Not a wing to his name. No. Just a great shadow floating through the air, big as a man. Maybe it was a man. Oh, don't talk nonsense, Hermie. Things are bad enough the way they are. A funny thing. You remember, Sonny, when Jack and Reggie was up on that second ledge up yonder and, and you and me saw one of them things float over to the same ledge? Yeah. Well, when I got up there to warn them, there wasn't a sign of anything. But we saw it. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe it's just an illusion. Lights and shadows play funny tricks in a great place like this. Hey, you know something? Yes, Hermie. I'm getting awful hungry. Well, you got something there, fella. Oh, what about it, Jack? Uh, we just going to stand here all night? Uh, where's that bundle of food? I have it here. All right, open her up, Reggie. We'll all feel better with something inside us. Uh, are we going to eat right here? Yeah, light better. Pick us up a place and squat. <laughs> what light? How about flashlight? Well, we'll save that. Well, here we are. Canned tomatoes, cheese, crackers, and bar chocolate. Here, give me them cans, Reggie. I'll open them with my knife. Well, what's the use? We've got nothing to eat them out of. Well, what's the matter with cans? Ooh, ish. Cold tomatoes out of a can. Well, you'll be surprised how good they'll taste. Here you are, Hermie. Thanks. Hey, this is like a picnic, ain't it? Cheese and crackers, Sonny? Thank you, Reggie. Dig in, Jack. Yeah. Can of tomatoes for you, Sonny. No, I, I don't think I want any. Eat them. Oh, but you have... Juice will keep you from getting thirsty. Tomatoes are good for you in this kind of climate. But I really don't want... Are you going to give us trouble? I'm oh, sorry. Give them to me, Doc. Okay, sugar. <laughs> Be careful you don't cut your juggler vein on that tin, honey. Yeah, I'm watching her. <sighs> hey, fella, that's good. <laughs> of course it is. Oh, I don't get a meal like this very often. That's so? Not where I come from. And where did you come from, Hermie? Oh, around. You and your father just bummed it around the country? Yeah, sure. You mean you didn't have any home at all? Not for a long time. <laughs> where did you and your father come from before he brought you to San Diego and stowed your way into our plane? Texas. The old man worked in the oil fields down there for a little while, but he liked going places best. You must have another name besides Hermie. Yeah. Don't you remember any other name? Hermie's all I ever heard. That's queer. There now, Sonny's cleaned up her whole can of tomatoes. It wasn't so bad, was it, hun? I ate them. Now do I have to say I liked them? <laughs> just plain don't like tomatoes, huh? Yeah, just, just nibble on a piece of chocolate to take the taste out of your mouth. Got some for me, too? No, I'll just bet I have, Ernie. Man, is she getting dark. More rain clouds. Looks like we're in for a real storm. Yeah, it's a dark in the temple now. You can't see your hand in front of you. Well, everyone finished? No, with the chocolate. Now bring it along. Let's get settled for the night. Well, where are we going? Up the stone steps along the wall to the first ledge. Jack, I, I'd rather not. And I'd rather not be in this situation at all. Yeah, but I, I'm afraid of high places. Well, the first ledge of cells is only 20 or 30 feet up. Besides, in the dark, you won't have any sense of height. Well... Is it really necessary? Yes. We can all get into one of the cells. One person can stand guard, the rest get some sleep. It makes sense, honey. Mm, all right. <laughs> Come on, then. Now, you better give us a little of that flashlight, Jack. All right. Here, over this way. I have to go up a single file. Yeah. I'll lead with the flashlight. Sonny, you follow me. All right. Doc, you come next, and then Hermie. You bring up the rear, Reggie. Oh, yes, that's me. Always the caboose. Hermie, you reach back and take Reggie's hand. Oh, I don't need any help. Reach back and take Reggie's hand. Yeah, she sure. That's the boy. All right, let's go. Crowd against the wall side of the stairs, and you'll be safe enough. Jack. I'm sorry, but I'm getting dreadfully ill. Here, give me your hand. Yeah, I keep coming. I'm, I'm awfully silly about high places. Now, don't worry. Jack's got you by the hand. I got you by the belt of your jacket in behind. You couldn't fall if you wanted to. Hey, we must be getting way up in the air. Well, we'll soon be there now. All right, hold it. We're up on the ledge. Did you pick out which cell we're going to use? Yeah, the second one. It's the largest. Easy now. Keep against the wall. It's only about three feet to the edge. And a sheer drop. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have eaten those tomatoes. Hang on, Sonny. It's almost over. All right, Hermie? Yeah. Say, I guess this is just about as dark as it ever gets any place. Uh, I guess you're about right. All right, now, 
right in here. Oh, I'm glad that's over. Here, Sonny, lay down on this bench. Uh, turn your flash over here, Jack. Yeah, I'm taking the knees. Sure you are. Now, just lay there until you get your breath. Say, our voices sound different in here. Yeah, they do that. No echo. Is this where we're going to spend the night? This is it. I like barns better. Then you got hay to sleep on. Reggie. Yes, Jack? You stay here with Sonny and Hermie. Keep your gun handy. Mm -hmm. What are you and me going to be doing in the meantime? We can explore along the ledge. Be sure we got it all to ourselves. Good idea. Oh, just a minute. I want to see if Sonny feels as bad as she thinks she does. Okay, I'll wait outside. How about trying one of these stone beds, Hermie? Ah, well, I ain't never seen a place like this before. You have not? Hey, who said that? I say it. Well, I can't see you. Where are you? Right here behind you. No, no, do not reach out your hand. Do not touch me. You can see me? See? Well, you sure got better eyes than I got. Who are you anyway? You would not know if I tell you. Look, uh... Are you the girl who was talking to Hermie a little while ago? Hermie? Yeah, the, the, the little kid. See, I talked with a little boy. You did, huh? Well, say, what's going on here anyway? I do not know what you mean, what go on. Well, what's all this business about this being the temple of vampires? <laughs> yes, that is true. Are you a female vampire? That is a wicked thing to say. Oh, hey now, don't go getting mad. According to Hermie, you're the... Uh, you're the prettiest thing he ever seen. So? Yeah. He said you had the reddest lips and the sharpest, whitest teeth. What's the matter? He say that? He did that. Why do you think I have red lips and sharp white teeth? You got me. Why? Why you don't go away? Well, I got caught in a rainstorm. Have to spend the night here now. So? Yeah. The little boy, he stay here too? Sure. Hey, what you interested in Herman for? Interest? Yeah, he said you was crazy about it. Kept talking about his nice white skin. Yes. White skin. What you trying to do, give me the shivers? And there's something else I want to ask you about. What's all them human bones doing down in that pit down there under this here temple? You ask that? Well, sure, I ask that. And uh, what about that dead Indian out there on the trail with no blood in him? <laughs> this is devil of vampires. Well, I think Jack would like to talk to you. Come here. Look, don't let go of me. Hey, 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 look out. Oh, well, where'd you go? Doc, Doc, who are you talking to? Jack, Jack, no, that, that girl was here. I tried to grab her and she jumped off the ledge. Jumped off? Yeah, she just disappeared in the air. <laughs> Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller, Temple of Vampire. This is your time to catch some sleep, Doc. Oh, no, Stone Binky. Not me. The others seem to be making up. Yeah, I know. How they do it's more than I can take you out. 
I'd rather sit down here and talk with you. Uh, keep your voice down. Let them get what rest they can. Sure. Does it kind of make your stomach turn over? Hmm? What's that? Knowing right out in front of us about three feet is nothing but space. Just makes you want to keep away from it. Mm-hmm. And that female vampire, whatever she was, just jumping out into it and floating off. You mean that's what you think she did? I ain't fooling Jack. She did it. Mm-hmm. And, all right, then. You, you tell me what become of her. I don't know. But she didn't float off. But I had a grip on her. I felt her go out, and she slipped through my fingers. Maybe. And, and more than that, I was standing between her and the steps, so... Well, she couldn't have gone down that way. Now, you said that before. Yeah. You and I searched every priest cell on this blasted leg. That's right. And did we find any sign of her? No. So, there was no way for her to get off this ledge but to jump. Now, tell me everything you can remember about her. Well, it was dark, of course, so I didn't see her. Yeah, I know. But she, she could see me. Did she say so? Yeah, she did. And e- even before that, I reached out my hand in the dark to feel where she was, and she stopped me. She said not to touch her. Uh-huh. What did she want? Well, she wanted to talk a little the way I got it. And Jack, she had the softest, silkiest little old boy. Did you ask any questions? Well, I don't think so. I, I asked most questions. Oh, wait a minute. There was one thing. What? Wanted to know if uh, we'd be keeping Hermie here all night. She uh, made a point of asking about the boy? Yeah, I asked particularly. Did she say why? Seemed awful interested in his nice white skin. Maybe she likes him young. Well, white people must be pretty excited with him after centuries of nothing but Indian. Huh? Mean what? Vampires. Jack, you sure not think I was talking to a little old she, she vampire? Very red lips and sharp white teeth and characteristics. Uh-huh, so I've been told. Yeah, in storybooks. Was she barefooted, you know? Well, I wouldn't be knowing that. Why? Uh, I told you about Reggie and me finding the footprints of a girl in the dust in the underground chambers. And probably hers, all right. Unless there'd be a lot of them. You think maybe there might be? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, Hey, I asked her about them human bones down in that underground pit. What did she say? No. <laughs> That's a great help. Yeah. What else did you ask her? I don't remember much. Oh, yeah, about that dead Indian of no blood in him out on the path. Yeah. Uh-huh, and uh, she said, this is the temple of vampires. You know all about the Indian's body, huh? Acted like it. Jack, you know, that would explain those big man-sized things with no wings that we've seen floating back and forth across the temple. The dead Indian? No, that... that vampire girl jumping off this ledge. Maybe they do it all the time. Good trick. Make a lot of money in the circus if it's true. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell her next time I see it. No, no kidding, though. It, it does tie up in the wind. Well, you better forget it. Doesn't make sense, huh? No. Yeah. Doc. Huh? What do you make of Hermie? Darn if I know. You like him? Well, how can you have it? It looks to me like a little fella just ain't wanted by nobody. Mm-hmm. Old man was no account and got tired of having a kid around his neck, so we up and stowed him away on our airplane. Doesn't seem to miss his father. The way I got his father figured, he missed him all right. But it's good news. Glad to be rid of him. Yeah. You got something different figured out? Yeah. And I thought so. You've been down on him from the start. And it's not like you, unless you got a reason. How you figured? Did you notice his clothes? Well, not much, you don't get. Interesting. Do you usually find an expensive and recently pressed and clean suit of clothes on the son of a tramp? Well, I'll be rolled over and found one. Hands clean, neck and ears clean. That's hard to do when you're on the bum, like freight cars, coming ride. Yeah, don't I know. Jack, maybe he got something there. Another thing. It isn't natural for a seven-year-old not to know his last name. You mean he's a kid from some nice home that's run away and he's not telling us the truth? It adds up. But that don't explain it. you riding in the way you've been. I think it does. He's got coming anything he gets if he's run away from home, worrying and frightening his folks. Well, yeah, there's that all right. And as far as I'm concerned, he's going to wish he'd never seen an airplane by the time I'm through with him. <laughs> he is a nice kid, though. No kid's nice for my money who hasn't got more sense of responsibility than that. Well, yeah, you might be wrong. Maybe. Hey, big cat. No, but... Somebody's coming down, down below with a torch. Three, four, five, six. Wow, would you be looking at that now? That must be some kind of an election rally. Right? They're carrying something. Circling around the altar. Must be 20 or 30 of them. Bunch of the room, the boys get together. Oh, 
All dressed in black robes like the man Sonny saw. Can you see what they're carrying? But, Jack, it's the body of a man. Yeah, it's an Indian. Yeah, nothing but a loincloth. Suppose he's dead? Yeah, he's dead, all right. Look, they're going down the steps to the underground passages. More bones for the pit, huh? Looks like it. Hold it. And there goes the torch parade. What sort of going on is that, anyway? Some sort of rites for the Temple of Vampires. Jack, you mean to sit there and say all that gang was vampires? How do I know? At least they seem to be priests of the temple. Yeah, robes and torches and stuff. Hey, hey, Jack. No, it's not. Did you just now get colder and getting colder in here? Am I having a chill? <laughs> Must be you. Not to get anybody the creeps. <sighs> Another dead Indian. Doc. Yeah? There's someone on this ledge with us. Hey, don't say that. You are quite right. But who said that? I say it for you. You have keen perception to know I had come. How did you get on this ledge? You didn't come up the stairs. No, I did not come up the stairs. I asked who you are. I am Manuel. Manuel, huh? Well, the fellow who frightened Sonny this afternoon. That is the girl, this Sonny? Yeah. She is inside the doorway. She sure is, fella. Asleep. Ah, asleep. A beautiful woman asleep. Now, look, I don't like the way you said that. No. And uh, if you've got any ideas about getting into where Sonny is, you better think again. I am in no hurry. You're not in any hurry about what? Doc, keep your voice down. You'll have everybody awake. And that would be too bad. I like to think of a beautiful girl asleep. Well, see if you can get off your mind the subject long enough to tell us how you got on the ledge if you didn't come up the stairs. Does it not suffice that I am here? Look, you fella, did you sure enough float back and forth between this here wall and that one over yonder? My means of locomotion interest you, senor? They sure do, and that's a fact. See, I pass from one wall to the other. No wings? <laughs> no wings. Well, there you are, Jack. Say, it doesn't make it so. And is that pretty little old female girl... Girl vampire able to do the same thing? Girl vampire? The one who talked to her was over here on the ledge talking to me a while ago. Ah, Angelina. She an honest to goodness, no fool, and she vampire? Angelina is priestess of the temple of vampires. And I suppose you would be a vampire, too. I am priest in the temple. Oh, nice work. I am happy. What was that parade of monks with torches and shakers who passed down below us a few minutes ago? The blood sacrifice. Yeah, we saw him carrying the body of an Indian. Is that where you get your sacrifices? Among the native Indians? See, si. I'd think you'd get mighty old fired tired of you using them for burnt offerings. We are their religion. Religion, huh? Everyone expects to make sacrifices to his religion. You mean the native tribes around here believe in vampire worship? Human sacrifice? You disapprove? Well, then, I reckon Indians are the only human beings here interested in sacrifice. See, except once in a great while when the white man strays within our boundaries. Now, just a minute, son. See? If uh, you got any notion about using us in your vampire ceremony, you just get the thought right out of your head right now. So? You heard me. Who's talking out there? Oh, Jack, honey, boy. Is that you, Doc? Honey, uh, don't go barging around in the dark. Why, Doc? Now, you forget it. If you're up on a darn high ledge here. What are you doing away? Pardon. You there too, Jack. I guess I don't sleep very good on stone. Now oh, here, sit down here. I'll put my arm around you. All right. Good evening, little one. Huh? Who, who's that? You do not remember me? Hey. You're the man in the long black coat. That is right. You took me away from the pretty lady. True. I did that. I wanted to ask you about that. Apparently, she didn't like it. No. Angelina did not like that. She was fascinated by the little one soft, white skin. I feel am. Angelina. Well, hello. You back again? Si. Blame you folks don't hop on and off this ledge like a bunch of sparrows. You remember me, little boy? Are you the pretty lady? Si. I give you six to eat. You think we're good, too. You are not afraid of me? No. I ain't afraid of nobody. And then you come to me now. Sure. Hermie, stay where you are. Doc, hang on. Yeah, I got him. Oh, I'll stand on. Okay, but I still got a hand on him. You will not let him come. Here, folks, listen to me. Vampires or not, a couple of slugs of lead aren't going to feel very good in your gizzards. And that's just what you're going to get if you don't clear out. Angelina. Oh, go. But the phone, honey. Go. 
What's the idea? The boy goes with me. Yes, if she's got her. No, I don't want her. I don't want her. Want her. Yes, she jumped off the ledge with her. You, Manuel. I am here. Tell her to bring that boy back here before I shoot you. I will bring the boy back, my sir. There we are. Call her. Tell her to bring him back. I will bring the boy back. It is the girl I want. Jack, why didn't you see him? Half what's in this kind of doctor? But Harry, I could hear his voice floating out there. Well, I told you to hang out of him. Floating off out there in the arms of a female vampire. episode for today is one of the missing ones and now my guest cast will take over for you i want you to understand that these were not done to sound like the people that you've been hearing for these first several episodes we simply want to fill in the dialogue for you so for the next several you'll have to get used to a different jack doc reggie sonny at all jack hadn't we ought to wake up reggie and sonny oh what good will that do frighten sonny right out of her way we can't just stand here on this ledge and let them awful vampire critters have honey i know that as well as you do what are we gonna do then well you heard what that priest manuel said he's bringing Hermie back and do you believe a word that comes out of his mouth all i know is he said he'd bring the boy back but it was the girl he wanted he wants sonny and that she vampire wants Hermie. she's Got him. Well, at least we know where they are. Over on the ledge on the other side of the temple. But what good is that to us? We don't know how to get over there. I know, Doc. Things like that just don't happen. Well, it's sure enough happening to us. If we don't do something about it in a hurry, Hermie's going to be right where that Indian was. A dead body at the head of a parade of vampire priests. <laughs> Can you suggest anything? Well, we can get down off this ledge and go across the other side of the temple and look for some way to get up to that ledge. No, that's out. We examine the other wall and there's no stairway leading up to the ledge on the other side. But we've got to get over there. Well, you figure a way and I'm with you. You mean you're just going to stand here? <laughs> Until I can think of something better to do. Well, you think. I want action. Doc, how is it possible for a human being to pass through the air? Dead human being. They're vampires. Yes, they're flesh and blood. They were afraid of my revolver. Maybe they know some way of making themselves lighter there. Ah, oh, that's silly. Well, you put all I know about vampires in your eyes. But I do know they do jump off this ledge and float around. Yeah, but I want to know how. And we can do it, too. What'd you say? This place is driving me nuts, too, but... Well, they can float from one ledge to the other. So can we, Jack. Bend over here and let me examine your head. Well, the law of gravity applies to vampires as much as it does to us. If they can do it, we can. Now, look, Jack, you, you're you not aiming to jump off this ledge, are you? Well, maybe. Oh, no, you're not. Well, what do you mean? Just to make sure. Oh! Oh! oh gotcha! Down easy. Sorry, Professor. Looks like my place is kind of going to your head. There you are. Get yourself some rest. Ah, there you are. Hey, who's that? It is I, Manuel. Doc, I'm back. Hermie, Hermie, you back? Oh, hang on to me, Doc. You're playing right. I'll hang on to you. The small one has nothing to fear at this moment. You all right, Hermie? Yeah, but he doesn't let go of me. I brought him back, as I said I would. So you did Thanks a million, fella. No, there is no thanks to it. It is the girl I want. Well, friend, you're going to have one blazing heck of a time getting her. So? That's what I said. Doc? Yeah, I mean? I, I don't like this place. You and me both, son. Where's that female vampire that grabbed off Hermie? Angelina? Yeah, Jovina. She's across on the other ledge. Sulking. Doc! You know what she did to me? What, fella? When, when we got over there, she held my arms tight and, and kissed me. <laughs> kissed by a she-vampire, huh? I don't like to be kissed, Doc. You sure she was kissing you? Yeah, and she held me so tight, I couldn't hardly get my breath. I don't like her anymore. Sounds interesting. Didn't get her telephone number, did you? No. That's too bad. You still here, neighbor? I am still here. Well, you tell that Angelina, babe, I'm a Texas boy myself. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, now, sexy boy, don't mind being kissed a bit. I will tell her. Hey, now, what's your sense of humor? 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 What is that? Forget it. Just the same. Thanks a lot for bringing back Hermie. You are more kindly disposed toward me? If you mean do I appreciate it, you're done to... Then you will allow me to enter the priest's cell and look upon the sleeping girl? Not for all the blondes in California. You will not? No, mister, and I'm standing right here with a gun in my hand. So don't try anything funny. You had better. That's where we don't agree. Give me the girl, and the rest of you may go in peace. I can't understand a word you say. And if you do not do as I ask, you will all be sacrificed. And I'll bet you even money on that. That too. Is your answer? That's it, son. The answer is no. The vampires will feast as they've never feasted before. The vampires shall feast as they've never feasted. Now he's mad, too. Well, let him be mad. He's got as much chance to get it. Sonny is a snowflake and a bonfire. Ugh. Ugh. Doc. Hey, you wait, Jack. Doc. What hit me? I did, son. You did? Yeah, Jack, I had to. You was talking about jumping off this ledge. Doc, you crazy fool. Come on, fella. Take it easy for a little. I ought to get up and stamp the living daylights out of you. But I was only saving you from yourself. I have no intention of jumping out into space than the man in the moon. But you said... Look, I said when I found out how the vampires did it, I could do it too. But I thought you really meant... <laughs> yeah, because you haven't got sense enough to pound sand in a rat hole. I've got a... Oh, splitting headache. Look, I, I'm sorry. I only did it for your own good. Oh, nuts. What's the matter, Jack? Hermie. Oh, yeah, the old he vampire brought Hermie back. Manuel? Sure, he brought me back. Well, where is he now? He left all burned up because I wouldn't let him go in and look at Sonny. You mean he tried to get in? I stood in the door and said I'd fill him so full of lead they could use him for a paperweight. Well, for once in your life, you, you did the right thing. There's gratitude for me. Hermie, you. Hermie, maybe you can help us. I will if I can. Now, where did the girl take him? Over on the other wall. There's a ledge over there, too. Well, how did you get over there? Through the air. But what held you up? What, what kept you from falling? The girl did. But what held up the girl? I don't know. Did you did you go across fast or slow? Oh, fast. We we kind of swooped down and then up. Swooped down and up. You mean you didn't go right straight across? No, down and up. Make anything out of that, Jack? No. How can I make anything out of anything with a large size headache? I'm sorry, mm. fella. Honest, I am. Well, you ought to be. Socking me. The more I think about it, the matter it gets me. It seemed the right thing to do at the time. Well, you got a socking coming in return, and don't think you're not going to get it, you hear? You mean you'd hit a friend when he wasn't looking? <laughs> Gladly, if the friend happens to be you, but... Look, fella, if you feel rotten... No, if I feel rotten... Okay, why don't you and Hermie go inside and try to get yourself some sleep? Well, it's still my watch. That's okay. I'm not the least bit sleepy. Neither am I, Doc. Well, you will be tomorrow. You go along with Jack. Go on, fella. All right. Can I depend on you not to pull some harebrained stunt? Now, then. Didn't I hold the poor while you were sleeping like a baby? And call me if anything happens. Of course here. I will. All right. Now, come on, Hermie. Come on. But, but, but I'd rather stay with Doc. Well, you'll be safer inside. Besides, a boy your age needs some sleep. Well, will you let me lay close to you? What's that for? I ain't afraid. It, it ain't that. It, it's just that I, I want to be close to somebody. All right. Well, we'll, we'll share the same bunk. Oh, right. that's well. <laughs> it ain't that he's afraid. He just naturally wants to be close to somebody. <laughs> Make myself kind of comfortable. Uh-huh. Oh, man, it is dark in this man's temple. <sighs> you are alone? Don't do that. No? No, I... I wish you darn vampires quit sneaking up on us, though. You wish I go away? Are you Angelina? I am Angelina, the high priestess. High priestess, huh? See? Si. Well, I don't give a take of who, who you are. If you're back here with the idea of getting your hands on her, maybe you'd better beat it. So? Why do you folks spend your lives roosting around on the ledges of this temple anyway? You act like a bunch of vultures. You say vulture to me? That's what I said, vulture. No fooling, Angelina. How do you do it? Do what? Swoop around in the air the way you and that man well been doing. 
You do not know? Would I be asking you if I did? The little boy with the white skin. Forget the little boy with the white skin. See, si. you call you Doc Long. What about it? I call you Doc Long, too. See? Si? Well, if you just got to call me something, why, well, that's my name. See, si. Doc Long. You know, I'd like to have a look at you. You've got a kind of cute talking voice. Not that I'm over fond of that chit chatting with female vampires. You understand that? Doc Long? Yeah. What is Texas boy? Texas boy? See? Why, I'm a Texas boy. What is there about Texas boy? Well, now, you're talking about something I know all about, sugar. Us Texas boys just plain death on women. So? Yes, sir. There ain't no two ways about it. Honey, us Texas fellas don't figure we're grown-up men till we beat King Solomon's record. You know about love? Know about it. Why, Angelina, we're the boys who fought it out. That is good. Good? It's here now. Wait a minute. See? Are you kind of crowding a little? You show me about this love, no? Well, now, <laughs> you put it like that. See? I put it like that. Well, look at what I got. Honey, you ain't much bigger than a minute. Is that bad? She wants to know if that's bad. But how come a little thing like you can carry a hermit through the air in your arms? Quite a hunk of shit. You put your arms around me, no? Now, just a minute. I thought I was showing you about love. See? Well, sister, you're way ahead of me already. You don't like it? You know there must be something about a vampire. You talk and talk and do nothing. That's us, Texas boys. Slow on the uptake. Man, once we get going, look out. I do not think you want to make love. You know, honey, I think you're right. But Why? Well, to tell you the truth, vampires are a little bit out of my line. Ah, maybe if you see me, you think different. Maybe. Hey, Angelina. See? Take your arms from around my neck. Here now. <laughs> Look out. Why, you just died low. Right, be off the sweat. What? Cat. Cat. Stop. Doc, Help. Doc, Doc, what's the matter? Come in, sweat. Doc, where are you? Right over here. The sledge, the thing oh, and the deuce. H hang on, Doc. Hang on. Oh, my uh, I, I got you. C can you help yourself? Uh, all right. Uh, up you come now. All right. Uh, come on. All right. Once more. Uh, now. Uh, oh. Yeah, there. Man, I was at bar that time. What? What happened? That little bell of crossing the witch of a vampire did it. She came back? Thought her was around my neck and started dragging me to the edge. When I yelled, she let go and well, beat it. Why, why did you... Why did you let her get that close to you? Well, you know how I am about women, Jack. Yeah, a little piece of lace will be the end of you yet, there, buddy. A little piece of lace with a girl inside of it. Why, son... That's a beautiful day. Today on the second installment of Bud Carey's old radio theater, I Love a Mystery in Temple of Vampires. And with that episode, we began the recreations of the missing episodes. My hat is very deeply off to Frank Knight, Del Bell, Pat Franklin, and Nikki Emanuel, and in the weeks to come, Rosemary Lieber. Because they all just stepped in like real troopers and said, okay, we'll do it. And we had some rather adverse things go on. The scripts, even though I had a working script, I did not have all the parts. They came Thursday, and we recorded on Sunday. And we'll be doing the same tomorrow, as a matter of fact, as you're listening to this yesterday.
Temple of Vampires. Five o'clock in the morning in the ancient Temple of Vampires, somewhere in the Central American jungles. The nightmarish experiences of one long night in the decayed cathedral are over. Now in the light of day, it's hard to believe the terrors of the darkness ever existed. That the girl Sonny actually talked to the high priest in the Temple of Vampires. That the boy Hermie was carried off the high ledge and through the air in the arms of a beautiful girl vampire and safely returned. That this same lovely female creature tried to throw Doc Long to his death from the high ledge. And that Jack and Reggie found, below the floor of the temple, a great pit littered with human skeletons. All this is hard to believe because the rainstorm passed with the night and the sun is streaming in so that even the old temple has taken on the air of benign sanctity. You can open your eyes now, Sonny. Just a few more steps down. I'm keeping my eyes closed until I feel my feet on solid floors. Oh, no stone steps are solid enough. Probably be here forever. I tell you, I can't stand in high places. Well, we're hanging on to you, Jack. In front and me behind... Reggie and I are down. We, we're down all right, ain't we, Reggie? That's right, Nami. Uh, <clears throat> there we are on the floor of the temple again. Uh. Oh, golly. I, I feel like I've just been rescued from something horrible. Ooh, doesn't that floor into your feet feel good? <laughs> you really don't like high places, do you? When, when I think we spent the night up there in that ledge, well, never again. Yeah. Yeah. That was nothing. I floated through the air up there. Honey, you did what? Now, look, young fellow, we weren't going to talk about that. But I did, Doc. What's he talking about? Well, you weren't supposed to know whatever happened. How about that, Jack? But I want to know. Ah, uh, Hermes spilled the beans. Okay. Last night, while you were asleep, that little female vampire, Angelina, swooped down on our ledge and grabbed Hermes. Carried him over to the other ledge. Oh, no. Yes, sir, Sonny. She did. And then the man came and got me and brought me back. You you were carried through the air up there at 30 or 40 feet above the floor? Oh, it wasn't so bad. Come on, let's get out of here. I don't ever want to see the inside of this place again. I agree. Besides, it's time we got back to where we left our plane. Ah, uh, good. We'll, uh, we'll get some breakfast and start to work on that thunder carriage, huh? Yeah, I agree. Well, you stay right here with us, honey. Sure. Oh, it's so wonderful morning. Aye, the whole world's full of sunshine if they end something like. Oh, and listen to the birds. I guess they don't like it very much. Yep, I'm busting their little hearts after the rainstorm. Yeah, okay, let's have to over this way. Uh, you, you watch the steps for loose stones. Oh, and here we go on the mark. Rolling over the stone so thick it's like walking in a carpet. We gotta have breakfast as soon as we get to the airplane, Sonny. You'll have to ask Jack. Are we, Jack? That's right. I like bacon and eggs. What do you like, Doc? Well, fella, I tell you, I like hot cakes and sausage, but I bet you ten to one that ain't what we'll be getting. What are we going to have? Cheese and crackers and another piece of chocolate. A breakfast? That's right. And here's the end of the terrace. And goodbye and good riddance to the Temple of Vampires. I hope that's mm -hmm. the last we'll see of that. It'll still be in view till we get the plane in run order. Well, I guess I can bear it from a distance. Okay. Here's the here's the path. Doc, you come up ahead with me. And you bring up the rear Reggie, huh? Hey, quiet. Reggie York and the old cow's tail. Now you take Hermes' hand, Sonny, and keep him away from the bushes along the edge. All right, Hermes. You're going to take my hand again. Sure, we're together. Huh, sissy stuff. <laughs> Our young man's ideas do change as he gets older. All right. Uh, here we go. Oh, it's sticky hot out here in the jungle, isn't it? Who would have thought it? Some difference from the inside of the temple. Uh-huh. It was nice and cool in there. But can you imagine it being like this at 5 o'clock in the morning? My clothes are sticking to me already. Yeah, lots of humidity after the rain. Hey, Jack, look here. Well, what's that? The body of that Indian's gone. The one we covered up with brush last night. Yeah, I, I see that it is. Maybe he was the guest of honor at that parade of vampires we saw last night, huh? Yes, I wonder. Well, let's keep going. It isn't our funeral. 
Here comes that tunnel through the jungle just ahead. What became of the birds? Well, maybe they feel the same way we do about this particular piece of jungle. Unhealthy place to be. That's a pleasant thought. Honey, I'm hot. Well, so am I, Hermie. And I know what I'm going to do the minute I get back to the plane. Yeah, what's that, Sonny? I've got a swimsuit in the luggage. I'm going to skip down and struggle into it. Oh, no, you're not. Hey, I'd like to know why I'm not. There are too many poisonous vines and bugs and snakes. Now, you keep your arms and legs covered up, yeah? Oh, dear. Now, you heard me. You should know better. Sure, I suppose I do. Hey! Maybe we could go swimming in the lake. That's an idea. Get yourself chewed up by an alligator. Mm-hmm. We didn't see any alligators. Yeah, that doesn't mean there wouldn't be. Any. He can't go swimming. Ask Jack. Can mm-hmm. we, Jack? No. They don't want us to do anything, do they, Sonny? Well, they're right, of course. Oh, look out! Snake! 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 Hurry, come back here. Get him. Get him, Doc. Huh? You, you bet I will. Oh. Ah. Ah. There he is. Ask you, Knight. Ain't he an all-red looking critter? Ooh, look at them pretty colors on his back. Where did he come from? I was behind. Dropped right in at our feet here from those branches overhead. Well, it's good for nothing but fly bait now. Ah. Ah. There. We won't be seeing him again. Uh, are you beginning to see what I mean? It makes me crawl all over. Let's get through this tunnel of vines and hurry up about it. Well, we're almost through now. Huh? I think I'll get inside the cabin when we get back to the plane and just stay there. Don't like Central America as much as you thought you were going to, huh? <laughs> well, I did think we were going to be in at least semi-civilization. Hey, don't tell us you're sorry you came. No, darn it, I'm not sorry. It was just that I expected something different. Nothing ever turns out like you expect. Around folks like Jack and Reggie and me, that's what makes life interesting. We start out to do one thing and end up doing something else again. I'm beginning to find that out. That's why we never make any definite plans when we start out. But we were headed for Costa Rica when the plane came Sure, in. I don't expect Central America could be any more interesting than this. Interesting is good. Sure. There wouldn't be any temple of vampires in Costa Rica, I don't expect. You you really enjoyed that? Why, of course I did. <laughs> now I can tell my grandchildren I've been made love to by Angelina, high priestess of the temple of vampires. Oh, oh, some distinction. Well, maybe you don't like it now, but wait till you get back home. And don't forget the old he vampire priest Manuel took the shine to you. Oh, you stop it. Well, he did. I don't think it's a bit funny. Come to think of it, Jack. He made a mighty unpleasant threat last time I talked to him, did I tell you? No, I don't think so. Well, when I would let him get in the priest cell where Sonny was sleeping... What did you say? That's right. He said if we give you to him, the rest of us wouldn't be bothered. You crazy fool. Oh, now, God. Jack. Well, what did you have to spill that for? Well, I thought Sonny'd like to know so she can tell her grandchildren. But... But we're not out of this yet. Oh, now, sure we are. Oh, you talk too much. Oh, that'll be my Texas tongue, no doubt. Well, go on. What was the threat? Well, when I wouldn't let him get in at Sunny, he said, All right, keep the girl for now. Mm-hmm. I warn you, the vampires will have such a feast as they had never known. <laughs> That's great. You like it? Oh, I'm enchanted. Okay, then. Let's make that a thought for the day. The vampires will have such a feast as they've never known. I uh, think your sense of humor is completely ghastly, Doc Long. Hey, look! There's the airplane! As big as life and twice as beautiful. Oh, I never saw anything that looked so good. It seems years since we left there last night. Oh, can I have a drink of water? I think we could all do with some. Uh, how about that, Jack? What about our water supply? Well, we've got a couple of canteens. We'll have to boil some more right away. There's the water I'll keep, Sonny. The ones that help us find this path. That's right, Hermie. But they don't look half as appealing this morning. Joe, feel that sun coming down. It's hotter out here in the open than it was in the jungle. It's hot enough to blister the palms of our hands if it keeps up. It's going to be a great place to jack up the plane and work on the undercarriage. Well, uh... Nothing else for us. As soon as I, we have some food, we can get to work, you know. You've got the uh, key to the door, Reggie? No, I think so. Give it to me. I'll climb up and open her up. Uh, yes, uh, here you are. Uh-huh. Climb up. Oh, there. There she is. All right. 
You climb in and hand down one of those canteens and break out some food. Okay, Jack. Oh, man. Is it a big oven in here? Ooh, eat. Everything uh, just as we left it? Yep, everything ship safe. Here you are with the water. Okay, drop it down. There, thanks. Doc, give me a hand up. Hey, Sonny Sugar, you don't want up in here. Hot box. Yes, I do. Okay, brother, give me a hand. Up you come. Um, whew, thanks. I'm smothered. I've got to get out of these things. Forget that bathing suit, Sonny. All right, but you don't mind if I get into a pair of slacks, do you? Suit yourself. Oh, golly, it's a bake oven in here. Hey, watch what you're doing. Don't start stripping off up front here. Go back in the luggage compartment. Don't holler before you're hurt, my fine Texas friend. Before I'm hurt, she says. Hey, Jack. Yeah? There's some cans of orange juice. How about a couple of them with our cheese and crackers? Okay, toss them up. Yes. Yeah. Oh, what are you doing up here, Reggie? I'm going to break out the tools. Not wasting any time, huh? Well, the longer we put it off, the longer we're going to be here. Something to what you say, no doubt. All right, Jack, here's breakfast. Okay, hand it down. Reggie, don't come back in here. Oh, keep your shirt on. I had no intention of it. I thought I heard you coming. <laughs> Have a girl, Sonny. The girl's got to protect your privacy. Yes, well, you know what you can do. <laughs> I'm coming down, Jack. There. Oh, boy. I never tasted any water that tasted as good as that. Well, then, how about sharing some with me, Hermie? <sighs> sure. Thanks. Mm. Much too good to run under bridges. Uh, give me a hand with these tools, Jack. All right, shoot them down. All right. Come on down. Yes, I think that's everything. Can I help fix the airplane? Sure. You can be the grease monkey. Grease monkey? And why not? Well, I feel a little better. Well, son of a gun, Halls, will you look what's come to live with us? Hollywood in pants. <laughs> Don't try to be funny. These are cute. Did I say they weren't? Of course they're cute. Just like the stuff in it. <laughs> Very nice, Sonny. Why, thank you, Reggie. And I might add, you've just the figure for it. You're sure it won't strain your sense of propriety to add that, Reggie? Oh, I say, not in the least. <laughs> You're wonderful, Reggie. Help me down. Honest to goodness, I'm sweating like a horse. Come on, jump. <laughs> oh, well, you asked for it. Look out. <clears throat> gotcha. <laughs> First breeze I felt today. Thanks. The pleasure was all mine. Where's some of the water? Here it is, Sonny. Thanks, Hermie. Ah, oh. oh, is that good. Doc. Come on over here. Is that my young mind? We're being watched. We are? From where? Over there on the edge of the jungle. I just caught a glint of something on the, on the movement of vines. Indians, do you think? I don't know. Now, don't say anything to the others for now. Yeah. All right, we're safe enough out here in the open, I think. We're going to have to keep guard. What about tonight? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Well, I don't think our troubles are over yet. Look, did you see that? Yes, sir. You know something, Jack? I always did want to be an Indian fighter ever since I could remember. Hey, Jack! What you done with Sonny? Well, she's up on the plane trying to make Hermie comfortable for the night. Little chap's pretty well tuckered out. Ain't we all after spending last night trying to sleep on a stone bench? Quite, with vampires roosting about. Well, we accomplished a good day's work even with eyes watching us from the jungle every minute. Funny thing, them watching us all day, not making a move. Well, it might be different tonight. I wouldn't be surprised. Seems like vampires in the dark are... Made for one another. We should be safe enough in the plane with one of us on guard. As long as we're armed and keep our wits about us. You know something, Reggie? I ain't shot me a wild Indian in a heck of a while. <laughs> I doubt very much if these are Indians. Priests of the temple, maybe. Most likely. But who are these priests of the temple? It sounds like they was on the Spanish side to listen to them. 
Bound to be with all that senior, senior reader and senior business. Well, there's no telling. They talk as though they've been here for centuries. Well, bound to have been. All that business about vampire worship being the native Indian's religion. But you don't establish a religion overnight. Uh, at least not one that will permit uh, human sacrifice. Are you two trying to sell me on the idea that these same folks have been here for centuries? Manuel and that little she vampire Angelina? Well, according to all the best authorities, the vampire is ageless. You know? Well, Angelina didn't sound to me like no three, four hundred year old female. Well, no matter of fact, she's not. Yeah, how would you know about that? I don't know it, but I know it isn't reasonable. There isn't and never was such a thing as a true vampire outside of some author's imagination. But what about all this stuff we've been running into? Well, undoubtedly, it has been some kind of a synthetic vampire worship set up down here. All the mystery and trappings that go with it, even uh, human sacrifice. But Manuel and Angelina are human beings. And what about Angelina's red lips and sharp white teeth? Well, most Latin girls do have red lips, and uh, naturally her teeth would flash white against her dark skin. Uh-huh. And how do they float from ledge to ledge up yonder in the temple? I don't know. Well, Angelina is sure enough mighty anxious to get her hands on Hermes. And Manuel is just as interested in Sonny. Yeah, it wouldn't take a vampire to find Sonny attractive. Now, that there was the most astute observation of the day, fella. There's plenty of he-men could go for Sonny. And I don't have to spit over my chin to hit one of them. More truth than poetry in that observation. One thing, though. Don't you think we ought to warn Sonny and Hermie about us being watched from the jungle? No. I hope they might wander off a little piece without thinking anything about it. Well, I've warned them to stay close to the plane. I agree with Jack, Doc. No use worrying Sonny any more than's necessary. Uh huh. Well, I'm telling you, it feels good to lay in the back, even on the ground. It's still pretty much on the muggy side, though, and the sun's been gone a couple of hours. Breeze may maybe come up off the lake pretty soon. Well, that's just plain optimism. <laughs> maybe. Oh, oh. Will you be looking at the stars up in that sky? Hmm. How many million do you suppose there is? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Quite. Where's your romance, son? It takes more than a star to flutter Jack's heart. Don't you know that by this time, Doc? Take more than a woman, even. You're just plain soured on the female sex the way I figure you, Jack. Oh, I can take them and leave them. I know that. A woman must have sure done you dirt somewhere in your life. That's going to be enough of that. Talking out of turn. No, forget. I still owe you a bust on the jaw for what you did to me last night. What's that got to do with it, son? Now, this would be as good as time as any. Now, is that nice? And change the subject. Okay, okay. Are we going to draw straws to see how to dry up the watch tonight? Well, if you like. Oh, Jack? Yeah? Somebody give me a hand down. I'm your man, sonny. There. All right. Throw it down. You won't miss me in the dark. It'll never be dark enough for that. All right. I got you. Uh, thanks. Want to set a while? Yes. Well, I thought we'd uh, turn in with Hermie. It's positively suffocating in that plane. I don't know how the poor little kid's going to get any sleep. Well, we're all in the same fix. We couldn't bring some blankets down and sleep out here under the plane. No, not a chance. It, it really is that dangerous? Yes. How how long do you think we will have to be here? A week, probably. Uh, how about it, Reggie? Well, maybe not as long as that. Now that we've got the plane jacked up and I've had a chance to look at the undercarriage. It isn't as bad as you thought? Now, good luck was riding with us. And how about the gasoline? No, it's, it's water, all right. I tested some of it this afternoon. That's going to be a nice job. Filling 200 gallons of gas through a shanty. Well, it's, it's got to be done. Tomorrow, I've got to hunt out a big flat rock I can use for an anvil. We've got a couple of twisted rods, and I'm going to have to beat them back into shape again. Well, down along the lake shore, we should find something. No, quite. I'll find something. The cigarette, Sonny? I was wondering if I was going to be left out. You three enjoying your pipe? I help yourself and ask for what you want. Thanks. Light. That's better. Notice how many bats there are flying around. They're not liable to get in my hair, are they? No. You know something, Jack? What's that? If it wasn't for Sonny and Hermie, I wouldn't mind sticking around here for a little. What are you trying to do? Make me feel in the way? Now then, sure, don't be so touchy. Yeah? I just meant that you and Hermie are up against something down here you can't lick. Jack and Reggie and I give as good as we get. So what? 
Well, if it wasn't for you two, I'd like to go back to Tampa and really find out what's going on. Oh, not for me. But if we pull out now, we never will know more we know now. I know enough. Just doesn't seem like us to pull out of anything before we got our curiosity satisfied. Well, then, for goodness sakes, go back. Don't let me stop you. Hey, honey, you don't need to take it that way. Well, if I'm cramping your style... Forget it, Sonny. Well, gosh, anyway, I tried to be a good guy. And you have, too. I, I didn't mean that. And just that, that girls were made for stuff like this. I wish I hadn't come. Hey, you folks down there. Honey, I thought you were asleep. It's too hot. I come down there. No, honey, you've got to get some sleep. I'm coming up in the plane, too. You'll smother. Well, then, we'll just smother. I'm coming right up right now. But, Sonny, you only just came down. What difference does it make? Well, okay, I'll help you. Don't bother. All right. That's how you like it. Uh, oh, there. Get out of the door, Hermie. I'm coming up. Yeah, sure. Oh, oh, darn. Hey, you tore something. Get out of the way, Hermie. Give you a hand? No, you can't give me a hand. I'll help you. Thanks. Oh, oh, oh sweat no fool. Well, we'll be sweating together. Come on. The female of the species. Hmm? Gets mad at it and then goes and rips her slacks pants. And they were such beautiful slacks, too. I don't like slacks on women myself. Well, not much, anyway. God, that wasn't a very tactful thing to say. About what? About wishing she wasn't alone. I didn't say that. Well, she took it that way. I've yet to see a woman who didn't take things different than you said it. Oh! Poor oh, oh, oh. Jack. You're all sleepy. How about uh, drawing lots to stand watch? Sure. Pick some different length sticks. All right. Short stick watches from now until midnight. Next from midnight up until three, and the long one from three to six. Out there. And that's when everyone gets off. Okay, Doc. Take one. Uh-huh. Reggie? Right now. Well, measure up. Well, doggone, I didn't draw the last watch. And I have the short one. From now until midnight. All right. That uh, puts me in the middle. You're welcome to it. Me and I'd rather sleep all in one piece. Well, what about it, Jack? What do I do? Well, just watch now. Either sit up in the doorway of the plane or patrol down here in the ground. Huh? Yeah, then I'll stay down here. All right. Now, keep your gun handy. And don't move out into the open, huh? You may depend on that. Going up now, Jack? Yes. Okay. Yes, I will, too. You in? Yeah. Okay. Hey. Hooray. Talk about your turkey's bad. All right. Pipe down. Yeah. Which side of the floor do you want? I'm putting my blanket right here. Okay. Good thing we could take these seats out and give us some room. Yeah. Ah. Uh, uh, I'll be out. You can cut the pine. Yeah. That blooming pipe's gone out. <laughs> Nasty bats. Good for mosquitoes, though. Ah. Uh, better. Reggie? Hello. Is that you, Sonny? It's just too darn hot inside. Doc and Jack asleep? I don't know. They act like it. I don't know whether you should be sitting in that doorway or not. Please, my slacks are sticking to me like red bathing suits. Not much cooler out here. Well, at least I can breathe. Hurt yourself when you slipped getting into the plane? No, just tore the leg of my slacks. Situation like this, good idea for everyone to keep his temper. I know it, but darn Doc Long anyway. Mm, quiet. <laughs> I see your point. Don't you suppose I know I'm in the way and I hate it? No, I wouldn't say that. Crabbing about eating tomatoes out of a tin, making a fuss about going up those steps in the temple, and just being plain female like Doc said, darn it all. I don't think sex has much to do with it. You don't? As I see it, you're not toughened up to it. Now, put a white-collar man from behind a desk down here, and his reactions would be just about the same as yours. Reggie, you're wonderful. <laughs> I am. I was beginning to get an awful complex about being a girl. <laughs> Were you really? If I had a gun, maybe I could give as good as I have got, too. You never shot one? Nope. <laughs> then I wouldn't advise it. But all you have to do is pull the trigger. Was well, that all? Are you standing right below me? Yes. Why? 
It must be getting darker. I can't see you. I moved into the shadow of the plane. Oh. Could you teach me how to shoot? In time. But we'll be out of here before you really get the hang of it. Well, that's the first thing I'm going to do when I get back home. Go to a shooting range and take lessons. What's the matter? Don't you think I could learn? Ricky? Ricky? Where are you? Oh, is that you? Why didn't you... Oh, what are you doing? Let go of me. Help, Jack. Jack. Help, Jack. Dog. Help. Something got me. Something got me. Something got me. <laughs> Sonny, Sonny, are you all right? She isn't here. She's not. I tell you, I heard her yelling outside but, the plane. But Reggie's on guard. Reggie, Reggie, wh- wh- where's that flashlight? Is something the matter? Uh, Hermie, you stay right where you are. Sure. Doc, get down out of the plane. I'm getting... There, you got your gun? You think I have it? There. Hey, Reggie, Jack, bring that flashlight. All right, I'm coming with it. Do I? Stay in here. Now, you stay right where you are. Hey, Jack, Jack, come here. Well, what's the matter? I found him. Anyway, I think it's Reggie. Turn on the flash. Here, let me see. Yeah, uh, they tried to strangle him. Will you look at that raw eye around his throat? Quick, cut him loose. Got it. Yeah, what no count? Can't you can't do that. All right, we've got him just in time. Now, get some water quick while I pump some air into his lungs here. Shake a stick. Uh... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here you go, Jack. Want me to swallow some? All right. Throw it in his face. Uh-huh. Uh, here. Help me lay him over this rock. Head down. You bet you. Let's go. All right, easy. There. Is he breathing? I'm uh, beginning to. It hurts. Going like a machine gun. Are you up there? We're up here, Hermie. You stay right where you are until we say so. What's the matter with Reggie? He ain't feeling so good. He's in bed all the time, though. He's going to have to have an awful sore throat in the morning. He must have tossed a noose over his head and then jerked him backwards off his feet. Yeah. Wonder they didn't break his neck. Well, probably thought they had. Yeah. Okay, he's, uh, he's going to be all right now. We ain't paid much attention to Sonny. What do we do now? Well, load him into the plane. All right. Grab hold. Yeah. Got him. All right. Come on. All right. Let him down. All right. I'll climb up into the ship, and you hold up so I can uh, so I can get hold of him. Okay. Can I do anything? Yes. Keep back out of the way, Hermie. You just take it easy. Uh, I guess nothing like this ever happened to me before. All right, now you just you stand out of the way here. All right, Jack, lift him up. Here, Hermie, you hold the flashlight. Yeah, sure. Up he comes. Yeah, just a little bit more. I'm on my tiptoes down. How's that? All right, you, you got him by the coat collar. Give him a boost. There, with him. Yeah. Got him? Yeah. Uh, there. Can he talk? No, he's unconscious. Can, can he ever talk again? All right, he'll be all right in a little while. Now, now look, Hermie. Now, just listen to me. Yes, yeah, sure. Now, you're one of the men in this outfit from now on. How about that? Sure am. All right, now, I got a job for you. You think you can do it? Sure. No, good. You're going to have to stay here and look after Reggie until he comes to. Alone? Yeah. Doc and I are going to have to go find Sonny. But, but, but where is she? Well, we don't know. That's, that's what we got to find out. Can you do that? I, uh, 
I guess so. All right, now we'll we'll lock up the plane so nobody can get in. Now you just stay here and keep very quiet. And pretty soon Reggie will wake up and talk to me. I'll try. Hey, Jack. What are you doing? Uh, climb down again. Uh, Hermie's going to stay here with Reggie. Yeah? What's that for? Uh, Reggie's got to have somebody to look after him. I get it. That's great, Hermie. That's what I call a man after morning. All right, come on, Doc. Hurry. Yeah. Bye, old boy. Bye, Doc. Remember, just keep quiet. Now, if anybody comes around the plane, don't move. Well, they can't get in, all right? All right. Now, we'll be back as quickly as we can. It's so long now. So long, fella. What's the matter? Uh, uh, the, the path from the lake to the temple, it should be here somewhere. Flashing right around. Hey, hey, there it is over yonder. All right, come on. Better keep the light on. Running the way we are. All right, give us away. As soon as they give us away, I'm going to break my neck. All right, we're on the path now. Seem to be. Uh. We're in the tunnel of mines. Got any idea what we're going to do when we get there? Well, the ledge is our best bet. If he's got Sonny over now, the ledge was sunk. Hey, where's our footsteps? We're in the moss of the stone courtyard. Now look out for those bushes. Then one here, Jack. Yeah, now, there's the steps leading up to the temple. Keep okay. close, all right? Okay. Stop sticking our necks out, though, seems like. All right, now, take it easy now. Will we just walk right in? Why not? Happy uh, the old temple. Quiet. We're heading for the steps leading up to the ledge. I'm with you. Okay, up we go. Nothing's changed since this morning. Well, what did you expect? Seems like there'd be some kind of celebration capturing a white girl. Yeah, first ledge. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, Jack. Oh, oh. Another torch rally. Parade of the goons. Every time they have a parade around the altar, they have a new sacrifice. Well, what about it, huh? But Jack, they just took Sonny away from us. How about you and I getting down there and busting up the little body? Oh, the dark. The sunny at the head of the parade to carry the body. It's stripped down to a loincloth. What do we make sure? Wait, nothing. Luck, Doc. It's another Indian. You sure? Look for yourself. Well, what do you know? It ain't sunny at all. Another dead Indian. Sure looks like a weird bunch in those black robes lit up by torches. Yeah, they go down to the underground passage, too. There's a parade that is a parade. You the guy who loves the parade, huh? Not that kind. Anyway, we know Sonny wasn't the guest of honor. What do we do? Go on up to the next ledge. What's that for? You remember yesterday when we saw those shadows floating back and forth from ledge to ledge? I do. Well, they were landing on the higher ledge. Yeah, but most activity was up there. All right. Now, that's why we're going up. Why not? Oh, no, we're going to need wings if anything happens. You know that. <laughs> this climb will put us up about 40, 50 feet in the air. Yeah, if they can take it, so can we. If they took Sonny up this high, she ain't never going to be good for nothing again. Why? The way she feels about a high place. No. no. I'm keeping close to the wall. My steps are getting pretty narrow. My shoulders cut a groove an inch deep in the stone wall. All right, here we are. Now, be careful. <laughs> he says, be careful. Now we're up what? Well, there's got to be some answer to why they float over on the other ledge. We're going to walk along the edge and look for something? Examine every inch of it. Well, get out your magnifying glass. Here we go. And we'll have to be satisfied with a flashlight. I'd rather have a parachute. Uh, I'll use the flashlight on the ledge. Now, you go into each priest's cellars as we come into it. Now, you got matches, don't you? A couple of boxes here. You know. Well, use them. Use them, he says. Where's that Nothing in here, Bears a debutante me. Hey, Doc. Yeah. 
There's something I never noticed before. What's that? Look at those iron hooks in the wall. There seems to be one every so often. What about them? They must be for something. Maybe the monks used to hang their clothes on them when they went to bed. Mm-hmm. Go on examining the rooms. Yeah. Nope, nothing here. Doc. Doc. Doc, come come out here on the ledge. I found it. You did? You found what? All right. All right, here it is. This is how they float from ledge to ledge. Naturally, it would have to be this way. See how simple it is? Ooh, what's happened? Richie, you awake? Oh, what's that? Oh, that you, Hermie? Yeah. Took you an awful long time to wake up. Oh, my throat. I, I feel like I've been honored guest at a necktie party. Oh, I say, what happened? Uh, where are we? In the airplane. Oh, but where's Jack and Doc? They're gone. And so is Sonny. Sonny? I guess somebody choked you and ran off with Sonny. Choked me? By Jove, now I remember. Uh, something slipped around my neck and I was jerked off my feet. Well, that's the last I remember. I'm glad you're awake. I don't like being out here alone. Well, they went off and left you? Jack locked the door of the plane. I don't like it. Oh, but where did they go? I don't know. To find Sonny. Those blasted brutes jumped me and carried Sonny off? That's what Jack said. Well, we can't stay here. I've got to get out and help. But we can't. We're locked in. I have a key. But Jack said to stay here. I don't care what he said. Quiet. Oh. Listen. What's the matter, Ratch? Listen. Is, is, is something the matter? There's someone outside the plane. Oh. You, you think you think it's the vampires? I know jolly well it's the vampires. Well, what are you doing with your revolver? You going to shoot somebody? With pleasure. A vampire's hide will look jolly well nailed to the door of my trophy room. You stay close to me, Hermie, no matter what happens. Yeah, I will, fella. Well, don't move around. I, I, I don't hear anything now. Well, something's nosing around outside. Crawling up over the plane. I, I guess we were all right with the door lock. Maybe. Reggie. Yes? Did you know one of the windows is open? What's that? Sonny opened it just a little crack so we could get some air in here. Now I'll have a look. Come along with me. I wonder what it is out there. Hold it. <coughs> yes, here it is. I, I guess nothing could get in that. <laughs> nothing bigger than a June bug. Hermie. Huh? Hermie. Little one with the white skin. She's calling me. Well, that isn't Sonny. No, it's the girl who jumped off the ledge with me and kissed me. Well, the female vampire. Hermie, you hear me? Uh, don't no. answer. No, I won't. I, I, I don't like her anymore. Little boy, I have some nice ripe figs for you. What is she saying? Figs? Uh-uh. She gave me figs the first time I saw her. Uh, listen, Hermie, I'm going to talk to her, but you keep quiet. All right. You do not need to be afraid of me, little boy. You're quite right about that, miss. Ooh. You heard me? You are not dead. Do I sound dead? No thanks to you, however. But I did not do it. Well, somebody did it. And give me a bad case of tonsillitis. Where are you, anyway? I, I can't see you. Sitting out here. On the wing of the plane? See. Still perching around on things, I see. Did you fly over here from the temple? Fly. That's what I asked you. I am not bird. Well, you seem to get around like one. You will open door and let me come inside. No? No. So? I'm more apt to take a pot shot at you with this revolver if I get sight of you. Where is Hermie? Over in the temple, I guess. That is not true. So you say. No. Manuel, take only the girl. No, so it was the priest chappy. See, I don't want the girl. I want Hermie. Why? Why? Yes, why do you want him? He has nice white skin. Yeah, you should see my skin sometime. So? That's right. Underneath my shirt, I'm as pink as a spanked baby. That is very interesting. So what has Hermie got? I haven't got. Hermie is little boy. He is there with you, is he not? I told you he isn't here. But I know he is. You still haven't told me. Why do you want him? You do not know about vampires? Uh huh. so you admit you're a vampire. I am high priestess of vampires. Yeah, I know a museum that would like you. 
museum. Yeah, that's right. Stuff. So? Believe me, they would love you. What is this stuff? <laughs> Never mind. You wouldn't like it. Are you alone? See. Si. I just about have a notion to come out there and pick you up. I am not afraid. You open the door and I will come in. What do you mean, that? See? Si. It's a deal. You will. You've got yourself a proposition. Climb over the door. Richie, you're not going to open the door. You keep back. If I can capture her, then maybe we can trade her back for Sonny. I wish you wouldn't. Yeah, don't worry. We'll make out. You crouch down in the corner here. I'm afraid, Richie. You've got to be a man about these things, Sammy. Besides, I'll shoot holes in anything that bothers us. Now, keep quiet now. Now then, uh, where are you? See, I am here. The door's open. Come on in. It is difficult. Reach out your hand. I don't see you. This way. I, uh, now then. No! The noose. Put it about his neck. Make sure this time. Reggie! Reggie! I'm here, little boy. No! No! Go away! Go away! I will hold you very gently. Gently. Let go of me! Put me down! Put me down! Come. Our task is done. I don't want to! I don't want to! I don't want to! Oh. Look here, Doc. This is how they swing from ledge to ledge. Swing? Yeah, sure, swing. Look look at this vine rope tied to one of these hooks on the wall. Vine rope? Well, spank me for a baby. Huh. Will you look at that? It must reach clean up to 100 feet in the ceiling. Ah, that's it. The rope's fastened in the center of the ceiling. They just swing from the ledge of one wall to the other. But, Jack, 40, 50 feet above the floor. That's maybe Tarzan. Yeah, it must be more than one of those ropes, too. Must be. The she vampire, man will. Both was a uh, hopping on off the ledge last right? night. And the girl carried Hermie in her arms. And hanging on to the rope. Not as strong as not. Well, your arms would develop in short order if you did much of this monkey stuff. Monkey stuff, no fool. I'm a the day with the greatest of ease. Well, now we can get across to the other ledge. Yeah. You don't mean it. Why not? You mean you've got the nerve to jump off this ledge on that rope? Will you tell me how else we're going to get across uh, the Sunny? If Sunny's over there. You know she is as well as I do. Yeah, reckon I do. Well, I wish you didn't. Well, we're wasting our time. You mean we're going to do it now, son? Can you think of any better time? It's a plain dark. And I can't see all the fresh air that's below me. And you can't see where you're landing, either. I'll well, have to chance it. Yeah, I'd rather make a blind airplane land in the Grand Canyon than to try and hit that ledge over yonder in the dark. Well, I can only try. Now, wait a minute, Doc. Doc, this is getting us nowhere. We've got to get to Sunny. Okay. Then I'll do it. You crazy idiot. You and me both, fellow. But if you can do it, so can I. This is my idea. Now, look, son. I have to knock you cold like I done last night. Yeah, I was just thinking of the same thing. Oh, so you want to wrestle for the privilege of committing suicide? Act like you had some sense, will you? It's just as much sense for me to go as it is for you. Doc, high places don't bother me. Me neither, fella. What you think I'm yelling about? There ain't nothing I'd rather do than swing out on that rope. That's so. Sure, it's so. <laughs> Things I used to do in my father's barn when I was a kid in Texas makes this look like child. Uh huh. So, seeing I've had the experience, hey, turn that darn flashlight on, Mark. Yeah, like swinging on a rope 50 feet up in the air, do you, huh? That's what I say. Well, why are you gripping that door jam with that cell so hard for? Just hanging on, I mean. I know what you mean. Just the thought of swinging through the air makes you uh, squeamish. Now, look, Jack, I'm taking a lot from you. Yeah. Yeah, if you're intimating it, I'm scared. Yeah, you're no more scared than I am. I hate it. It just happens it, it doesn't make me sick to my stomach. Who's sick to his stomach? You are. You're green around the gills. Tell them fighting words. Shut up. Would you turn off that place so quick for us? Look over the ledge. Down on the floor. Well, son of a gun. Another torch by a parade. Oh, they sure do a heap of sacrificing down in this country. Yeah. Second time tonight. Quiet. Quiet for a minute. Can't hear them shakers they use so well up on this high ledge. One of it's the only kind of music they like. Doc, do you see what I see? What do you see? 
There's a girl leading the priest. Ah, uh, be a small detail. Do you suppose that's our little Angelina vampire? Uh, Doc, it isn't the body of an Indian man this time. Ain't got anything on the loincloth, no matter who you Jack, isn't that a little kid? Yeah, he's alive. Look, look at him fight. They've got him gagged. Well, what are we going to lay here and watch him sacrifice a little kid? Yeah, he's alive, all right. And he's going to stay alive for my money. Wait, 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 wait. Look how white his skin is. That doesn't make sense. Any kid's skin is white. Well, that, that isn't an Indian kid. That, that's Hermie. Hermie? Jack. Look. Look what's happening. They're not taking him down into the underground passage. The girl's taking him. Hey, the priests are going down underground without him. Ah. Uh, she's coming this way. She's bringing him up the stairs. Well, let's go get her. No, no, no. She's coming up here. Jack, if we knew the Hermie without lifting a finger... Don't you get it? She's got to come up here. She does? Why? This is rope. This rope, she's got to come up here to a rope to swing across to the other ledge. Why now? Ain't that a break for us? Uh, she'll probably come up on these steps a lot faster than we could, so keep quiet. But she can see in the dark. She'll see us before we even know that she's around. Yeah, I forgot that. Quick, into the, into the free cell. What about the rope? If we can't hear her, she'll have to get away before we know she's here. I, I fixed that. I tied it up out of her reach. Now you're talking. I hold it. Jack, how'd you get her, man? Where's Reggie? I was just wondering. Quiet. You do not be afraid, little Hermie. <laughs> Do not struggle in my arms. Angelina, don't move. So? Keep the flash on her, Jack. Get between her and the stairs. With pleasure. Now then, put Hermie down. I will not. Don't try to be clever. Put him down. Never. Doc. Yeah. Go up and take Hermie out of her arms. You do not. You make one move and I'll shoot you dead. Go on, Doc. Fons, Fons, Angelina. You keep back. Oh, so? You come one more step and I throw little boy over the ledge. Yeah, no, you wouldn't. Yes, I will. What about that, Jack? Uh -huh, she knows better than that. <laughs> yeah, but does she? Yeah, she's a dead pigeon if she tries. Listen, you. I'll give you to the count of three to put that child down. And if I do not... I'll shoot you dead in your tracks. And if you do that, little Hermie and I will both roll off the ledge together. <laughs> Hi, Jack. That's dangerous. Be careful. You won't give up the boy if we let you go? No. Well... Looks like we're licked, Doc. It does kind of look like it, doesn't it? Might as well put up your gun. All right. See, that is better. Get her! Get her, Doc! You bet! No! 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 Put her up! Oh. Yes. Ah. Jesus! All right, hang on to Hermie. I got him! Pull her off! Here, pull her into the priest cell now. There. Get on her! As strong as a bag of... Yeah, here we go. You dare touch the high priestess. Now lie still. She bit me and scratched uh, me like an animal. Just, Jack, never mind. Get Hermes' gag off. Right about Reggie. Yeah, wait a minute, Hermes. Uh, here, here, little fella. Uh, oh, uh, I, I want some clothes, Doc. I, I want some clothes. Never mind your clothes. Where's Reggie? They hit him and put a rope around his neck. Dangling? Doc, get back to the plane. Leave you here? Don't argue. You've got to save Reggie. at night, high on the ledge above the floor of the Temple of Vampires, some place in the jungles of Central America. First, the girl Sunny was stolen from the crippled plane and carried back to the temple by Manuel, a vampire priest. Leaving Reggie York and the boy Hermie in the plane, Jack and Doc raced to the temple and up to the high ledge, 50 feet above the floor level. 
Here they found the temple priests floating through the air from ledge to ledge. There were vine ropes fastened to hooks in the wall, which reached a hundred feet into the air to the center roof of the temple. As Doc and Jack discussed swinging to the ledge across the room where Sonny was a captive, the high priestess Angelina came up the stone steps with Hermie in her arms. He was stripped down to a loincloth. Jack and Doc grabbed Angelina and rescued Hermie. He said they had knocked Reggie out and pulled a rope tight around his neck. Without waiting for more, Doc dashed down to the stairs and back to the plane, leaving Jack sitting astride the high priestess and Hermie standing by very naked and scared. Uh, I will not be treated this way. Listen, you you lie still or you're going to get an awful headache. You do not sit on me. You want to crack behind the ear with the butt of my revolver? Uh, I am Angelina, the high priestess. I don't care if you're the Floridora sextet. You lie still. You will die. Uh, all right, that's better. Hermie. I'm here, Jack. Now, oh, come closer. All right. Now, you see this rope, this rope belt around Angelina's waist? Yeah. Now, can you untie it? Sure. Well, go ahead. Why you do this thing? I need it to tie your hands behind you right there, huh? I am not slave to have my hands tied. You got it, Hermie? Yeah. All right, now pull it out from under her. Uh, uh, all right. There. I got it. All right, now, take this gun. Yeah, sure. All right, careful now. You better take it into both hands. That's it. Now, hold the muzzle of it against her head, and if she moves, pull the trigger. Hey, I don't want to kill her. I don't want you to. She doesn't either, I don't think. Hey, keep out of the way of that flashlight. Yeah. All right, lady. Put your hands behind you. See? Now, that's it. Have you trussed up here like a chicken in no time? Say, he's got little hands, hasn't she? Now, you keep an eye on that gun. Sure. Little hands, but strong. Plenty of calluses from swinging on these ropes. You do this to me? That's right. This is insult the vampires will never forget. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah. There. Enough left over to tie your feet. All right, Hermie, stand back. Guns are kind of heavy, ain't they? Well, you get used to them. All right, lady. Get up on your feet. So? All right, now. Lay down on the stone bench. Why I lay down? So I can tie your feet. Hermie, put the gun down and hold the flashlight for me. Yeah, sure. That's it. Hey, she's barefooted. Well, so are you. He took my clothes away from me. Who did? A lot of fellas all dressed up in black. <laughs> Where'd you get that loincloth? This? Yeah. Fella put it on me. That's real Indian stuff. Yeah? Yeah. That'll hold you. You will die. Sure, people have been doing it for years. You cold, Hermie? No, I ain't cold. But I wouldn't want Sonny to see me like this. Well, see what we can do for you when it gets daylight. Now then, what happened at the plane? You mean when she grabbed me? Yes. Reggie thought she was alone. And, and not unlock the door to catch her. And uh, was she alone? No. There were a lot of fellas dressed in black. They hit him and then put a rope around his neck. He will die. Is that all you can think about? People dying? I'll bet he ain't dead. Well, Doc should be back pretty soon. We'll know what to do with Angelina here. What you mean, do? If anything's happened to Reggie, you don't think you're going to live to tell about it, do you? So? Well, that's right. An eye for an eye, if you know what I mean. You think you can kill me, high priestess of the vampires? Sure, I know how to kill vampires. So? Sure, you dig a grave, put the vampire in it, drive a stake through his heart, and throw dirt on it. No, that is bad. That's the way they said to do it in every fairy tale I ever read. That is wicked. Hey, hey, Hermie, come here. What's the matter? Turn around. Let me see your back. Here. Give me the flashlight. Yeah, sure. Hermie. Yeah? Who wrote this on your back? Wrote on my back? You didn't know it was here? It's it stamped with indelible ink. Huh? That's funny. You, you didn't know about it? No. Well, Sonny's got a camera. Tomorrow we'll take a picture of it. You might like it for future reference. Did it say something about me, Jack? Yes. Hey, listen. Somebody's coming up the stairs. Maybe it's Doc. Now, keep still. We'll turn out the flash and wait. Hey, Jack, you there? 
In here, Doc. You got Reggie with you? Yeah, I got him. And is he a sick specimen of a man? Where's the flashlight? Wait, wait a minute. There. That's better. Hey, you better sit down. Right here. Oh, I just barely made it. Well, I see you've got Angelina babe tied up. How you, honey? You will die. <laughs> Don't tell me. See, I say so. Uh-huh. First time I've had a good look at you, sister. You're a pretty little thing at that, eh? Now you are sorry you did not make love to me, huh? Come to think of it, I am at that. But now we've got you all tied up and all the time in the world. I make love with you? You turn me loose? No? Well, there's a proposition I'm going to have to... All right, you leave her alone, Doc. <laughs> it's all right if I sit down here, I guess, and pet her head, ain't it? <laughs> have it your way. Yeah, that's how us Texas fellows are. Can't leave a pretty girl alone a minute. Oh! Ah, Blame her female hide, Doc. Let her alone. Looky, would you? She might have there bet my hand off. Now, serves you right. Angelina, honey, if you and me is going to have a romance, I'm sure as heck going to yank them teeth out first. That's the second time you bit me tonight. You don't like me? No? Sure, I like you all right with a muzzle on. Jack, what are you doing about Sonny? Well, there wasn't anything we could do until Doc got back with you. He said you found a way to get across to the other ledge. Yes, a swing on a rope. Reggie, now you better lie down. You look awful. You can't have the wind choked out of you twice in one night and not feel awful, my friend. And I just got here in time, too. Go on, Reggie. Stretch out on that stone bench there. I'm good. Uh, hello there, honey. Where are your clothes? The fellas got them. They sure did enough, didn't they, son? Well, now that we're all together, I'll be leaving you. You'll be doing what? I'm going to go after Sonny. Now, look at Jack. Now, you're going to stay here to look after Hermie and the girl. Uh, Reggie. Reggie's in no condition for anything. Now, stop arguing, Doc. I'm going to go to the other side. Look here. I draw straws with no. you. No. Jack, old man. And don't double up your fists. We've got other things to do besides fighting for the honor of swinging on that rope. I'm asking you, Jack. I said no. Doc. Doc, you crazy fool. Come back here. Doc, don't do it. Look out below. All right, you got me. Why don't you kill me and get it over with? Kill the beautiful Sunny? Oh, no. You you not understand. Maybe I don't want to understand. See, perhaps that is it. Oh, what is this place? What kind of thing are you... Why am I here? Oh, you ask too many questions, senorita. Well, doggone it anyway. I will answer your questions. All of them. First, what is this place? This is, uh, this is secret quarters of high priest. Who is I, Manuel? Well, we are on ledge high in air across from temple from where you slept last night. You think I don't know that? You think I don't know how near you came to arriving with a dead girl in your arms? Dead girl? When when you jumped off the ledge over there with me, I, I think my heart stopped. Anyway, something terrible happened. But I hold you up and I will not let you fall. Maybe it would have been better if you had. You think so? Now maybe. Ah, uh, uh, but, but wait. Ah, uh, the good old male ego, I, huh? I, I do not understand. You may be all they say about Latin lovers, but me, I flunked Latin four years straight running. I... Still do not understand. Forget it, vampire. That would be a good joke where I came from. So you call me vampire? Look, Manuel, I know you like to hear your own voice, but the suspense is killing me. So? If I'm to be a beautiful sacrifice, say so. Anything's better than sitting here in the dark and wondering what to expect next. You do not like the dark? I'm beginning to hate it. Then you shall have light. The perfume candles shall give you light and the scent of ecstasy. I can do without the scent of ecstasy. Hey! See? Quite a place you have here. You are pleased? Looks like Hollywood's idea of Cleopatra's boudoir. Oh, uh, that is good. Well, it ain't, hey? This secret place has stood this way since the Temple of Vampires was built. Centuries ago. An awful lot of brass. Brass? 
Yeah, those dishes and vases and that chair over there. That is gold. Gold? See, this, this is nothing. In the sacred vaults, the treasure of gold and precious stones is beyond count. Sacred vaults? See, so now you feel better, eh? I don't see it. No? You're cockeyed if you think it's going to be any more fun dying at the hands of a multimillionaire. No, no, no. Not die. To live. I don't think we understand each it other. It is as you say, you do not want to understand. Maybe. You would not like to live among all this treasure, no. That's right. You're no. right. No. No. Jewels to wear. Gold. Perfumes for your bath. Slaves to do your bidding. Worship far and wide. Worship? In all the land, you would submit to no one. But me, I, the high priest, alone would be above you. To all others, you would be the white goddess. The white goddess of the temple of the vampires? See, you, you, you like it, Sonny? Is that my choice? Dead sacrifice or life goddess? Oh, you are beautiful. Manuel. See? Take your hands off me. From the moment, from the moment I see you. Sure, I know. Take your hands off me. You are, you are beautiful. Look, I don't want to have to tell you again. No. No. Uh, oh, you, you strike, Manuel. Listen, you big lug. When I say take your hands off me, I mean it. Uh, but you are my prisoner. So I'm your prisoner. See? Well, don't let it go to your head, because if you do, somebody's going to get hurt. You will do, as I say. You forget I've got three darn efficient hometown boys out looking for me this very minute. Bah! They will never find me. I'll bet you good round American dollars on that. They cannot get to this legend, even if they did. They could never find the secret door leading to this chamber. Don't make me laugh. I can put good old American curse on you so fast that it'd make your head swim. Oh, uh, American curse? Sure, all I got to do is stand up, salute, and sing the Star Spangled Banner, and the Marines would pop out of every crevice in this dump. Marines? You don't know what Marines are? No. Well, you just try getting fresh with this American girl again. So? Yes, so. They'll hang your skin on the fence to dry before you even know you've lost it. Uh, we shall see. What are you going to do? Uh, we shall see. So, you want to fight? Yes. Yeah. See, we shall see. All right, come on. I haven't killed me a vampire in a heck of a while. But he must have made it across, Jack. Otherwise, he would have swung back this way, uh, like a pendulum on a clock. Unless he lost his hold on the rope and fell. But if he'd fallen, we'd have heard it. Oh, the least sound echoes in this place like thunder. Yeah, I suppose so. Crazy fool grabbing the rope and jumping out like that. That was my job. You noticed not a peep out of Hermie. I gave him my coat to lie down. He curled up and went to sleep. Joe, how he can sleep after what he's been through is more than I can figure. Exhausted, drugged with nervous excitement. Yeah. His inhuman priest stripping him of his clothes and parading him about the altar. It would have given me stomach ulcers and the jumping jitters besides. Say, Reggie. Yes? Did you notice his back? His back? Hermes? Yes. There's a message stamped on his back in indelible ink. I say, you mean that? Question him. Don't even know it was there. But what does it say? The exact wording was... Hermes, an orphan. Treat him good. Orphan? Yeah. But I thought he told us his father tucked him away in the luggage compartment of our plane. Well, that's what he said. Well, then what does the writing on his back mean? Either that or the, the man who put him on the plane wasn't his father. Just sort of looking out for him, eh? Yeah, and Hermes thought he was his father. Either that or it was his father, and he put that message on the kid's back with the intention of doing away with himself. And the little chap is a mystery, isn't he? More than I can figure out. Turn the flashlight on our captive. Here. Ah, the beautiful Angelina. <laughs> asleep? No, I am not asleep. <laughs> having fun? No, I am not having fun. Ah, too bad. How long you keep me here? Mm, depends. So? Yeah, we're waiting for Doc to come back from the other side. Other side? Yeah, he uh, rode your swing over to the other ledge. No, he did not do that. Oh, yes, he did. But he must not. That is sacred ground. Sacred? I didn't suppose anything was sacred in this jungle slaughterhouse. See, 
For hundreds of years, no one has been allowed there but the high priest and the high priestesses of the temple. Oh, didn't you take Hermie over there? And hasn't that priest Manuel taken Sonny over there? See, that is different. Mm, different? See, that is where the sacrifice is made to the sacred vampires. What's that? That is the way... What do you mean, sacred vampires? See, sacred vampires. You mean that's where the actual sacrifice is made over there on that other ledge? But what about those priests cutting up didos down below, parading around the altar with the bodies of the victims? They are the acolytes. Well, that still doesn't explain it. When the sacred vampires have drunk their fill, the high priest takes the bodies to the acolytes who complete the ceremony at the altar and do what is required of them in the chamber beneath the temple. Ah, so that's it. But I don't get it. What are these vampires? One does not talk of the vampires. Don't, eh? No, they are sacred. Only in whispers does one speak of them. So you're not actually a vampire. That is a sacrilege. I am only priestess. And the same thing goes for Manuel? See, we are handmaidens of the holy vampires. Well, then there really are such brutes? <laughs> it's a good story anyway. Hey, Jack. Hey, it's Doc. Doc, uh, are you back? Yeah. You and Reggie come out on the ledge a minute. You all right, Doc? Of course, I'm all right. Man, what a ride I had. Better than shoot the chutes at the beach. Landed all right on the other side? Sure. Looks when you ride up on a ledge, you can't miss. Oh, what did you find out? That's just the trouble. Not a dull gone thing. Nothing at all? No. First place I went off without a flashlight. One thing I did find, though. Yeah? That ledge over yonder ain't like this one at all. I mean... They're not just a bunch of priest cells along the ledge on this side. Well, what's it like? Must be a lot of big rooms over there. Lots of stairs and runways and stuff. Don't dare get too far away from my rope for fear of getting lost. And then, with no light... All right, well, what about Sonny? Not hide, not hair. Didn't see nothing of that he vampire either. Everything quiet as a graveyard. Well, she's over there, and I'm going over there. Now, wait a minute, fella. Well... I've got the idea some of them rooms over there got doors in them. I never saw a room without a door. You don't get it. They're rock doors, just like the walls. When they're shut, you can't find them no matter how good you are. Mm. And I was just thinking, the only way we're ever going to find Sonny is to get Angelina in there to tell us where the doors are and how they work. <laughs> Fat chance you'll have her making that one told. You want to bet? I don't think so, Doc. She was frightened and upset when she heard you'd gone across. Well, look now. After all, she's only a female, ain't she? Mm, there you go. Eh, no, wait. I mean, everybody knows a woman is a jealous animal. Oh, so what? Well, couldn't we cook up some kind of story? Like, maybe that he vampire, Manuel, liking Sonny so much, you know, he's offering to make her a high priestess instead of Angelina. You don't think she'd go for that, do you? How can you tell what a woman would go for, especially about another woman? <laughs> well, you're the experts on the feminine sex in this outfit. Sure I am, and I ain't seen two women yet who wouldn't like to scratch each other's eyes out. Especially when one of them's a blonde or a brunette. All right, come on. Yeah, let's, let's try it. Hello, Angelina. So, you have come back. That's right, I beat it back here as fast as I could when I heard something. What you hear? There was a crack in the wall over yonder. Crack in the wall? I heard that Manuel fellow talking to Sonny. They're in some kind of room. There is no crack in the wall. Oh, there ain't, ain't there? Well, just listen to what I heard then see what you think. See? Yeah, that there he vampire was making love to Sonny. No, he was not. I swear to my grandma I was. He was going on like nothing I ever heard before. Said if Sonny'd make up to him, blamed if he wouldn't kick you out and make her high priestess. Manuel, say this. That's what he said. Said he was sick to death of dark skinned women. What he needed most right now was a little yellow haired girl about the size and shape of Sonny. I kill you for saying that. Well, Angelina, ain't no flesh off my bones. Just thought you'd like to know what's going on over yonder. What you say is not true. Okay. You don't care. I sure don't. Wait, wait. No, sir, I'm going to say. Man shouldn't butt into other folks' hairs, anyway. You listen to me. Go ahead, I'm all through. You let me loose. I fix that girl. Uh-uh, not us, sugar. 
We got you, and we're going to keep you. But I can do nothing if I am here. I thought you didn't believe me. Maybe I do not. And what are we arguing for? Just let it go. Come on, Jack. But I cannot stay here. I guess you're going to have to. Please. You want girl back? Want Sonny back? Why should we? If she can get to be high priestess in this here temple, that's about a good job. I will kill her. Imagine Manuel could take care of you before you could do much about that. If I tell you how to get in room where they talk, will you take her away from here? Well, if you want to tell us, but understand we're not asking you to. See? Just below the sign of the vampire, there is loose rock on wall. Sign of vampire? You know, picture of a vampire cut in a wall? See, carved in the rock. And under that's a loose stone? Remove the stone. You will find rope. Pull on rope and door open. All right, Doc. That's what we wanted. Yeah, what did I tell you? Thanks, Angelique. You will take girl away? You bet. Your bottom dollar will take Sonny away. Come on, Jack. I say, just a minute, you two. All right, come on outside with us, Reggie. Now, what's the plot now? All right. Hold it. Now, listen, Reggie. I'm going across with Doc. You mean we're both going on one rope? Well, why not? Manuel carried Sonny across. We should be able to make it under our own power. Yeah, maybe. I, we've got to. And you, Reggie. Yes? You stay in the doorway of this priest's cell and guard Hermie and the girl. Don't move out of the door and shoot anyone who tries to get in. And don't let anyone get near you again. Now, depend on it. Twice is three times too many. And don't go near the girl. She'll try anything to get away. right -o. I let her get away with Hermie once. Not again over my dead body. All right. Now, we'll be back as quickly as we can. Good luck. And don't worry if it takes us longer than you think it should. Now, I'll hold the fort. All right. Where, where's the rope, Doc? Here she is. Got your flashlight? Yeah. But uh, are we going to work this one out? Best if we can grip it with our knees as well as our hands. All right, you ride high. I'll get my knees just a little below yours. Okay, you ready? Yeah, it'd be a little trick if we do it. Say when. Let's go. All right, now. Here we come up. Yeah. Uh, there. Now look out. Look out, I'm, I'm going back. Uh, I've got you. Yeah, pull me in. Oh, boy. There you are. Oh, I thought I had a round trip ticket for a minute. Yeah, we kind of got in each other's way. There's a place to fasten the rope for when we want it. All right. Now then, the sign of the vampire. Get out the flashlight. All right, let's go. I wish we could have got just a little more information where to look for the thing. Here's a kind of passageway. Should we try it? Wait. Wait, look there. What now? Well, this is another rope, just like the one we swung over on. Must be the one man well used to bring his son in. I wonder if I could fix it some way so he couldn't use it in a hurry if he tries to ditch us. If you boost me up so I can fasten it on that rock sticking out, well, then he can't reach it. Good. Now, come on, you. There you go. You step on my hand. Okay. Only look out. The ledge ain't very wide, and if I fall, I'll keep on going. Oh, out. don't talk so much. Mm -hmm. Let me up a little higher. Oh, there she is. Let me down. Okay. Hey, take it easy. Uh, there you are. Oh, take care of that. What about our own rope? Yeah, let's let's see about it. Exit two. I'm gonna have him trapped if he hasn't some emergency exit. Oh, oh here it is. Shoot the flash up. Yeah, look. There's a place higher up the past me. Boost me up. All right. Come on. Mm, up I go. Hey, don't wobble. I'm, I'm getting it. Okay. All right, all right. Oh. <laughs> won't you be surprised? Yeah, I hope you fasten them so they won't slip loose by their own weight, huh? You think I want to be left over here with no way of getting back? All right, let's, let's try that passage now. You better go ahead with the flash. Look like much but solid wall. Oh, the ancients seem to have gone in for architecture in a big way. You ain't woofing. Don't make buildings like this anymore. Doc. Uh-huh. Suppose Angeline was lying to you. Why would she do anything like that? Mm, it's possible. Don't be silly. I can smell a woman lying to me a mile off. Uh, you don't need to grunt at me either. I know. 
If all the women... Uh, here, here, wait a minute. What's the matter? Here, look at the wall. There you are. Picture of a vampire. And what a vampire. Well, go on, fellas. Let's see if there's a loose stone under it. Mm. Mm, doesn't seem to be. Let me tap on them with the butt of my pistol. Hey, Doc, no. Huh? Why not? Manuel could hear tapping. Oh, you might have tapped. Here. Here. Here it is. Then Angelina told the truth. Yeah. Ah, there's the rope. All right, get ready. I'm going to pull. Pull it, son. All right. Huh? Nothing happened. Uh, hey, hey, there she is. Will you look at that stone door sliding right through the ceiling? All right, keep your gun handy. Black on the inside of a cow. Hey, what's that smell? Ugh, what a stench. Oh, he smells like two feuding polecats met in here. Flash your light. Jack, Jack, look there. Doc, Doc, get back. Jack. The vampires. We've opened the den of vampires. <laughs> I Love a Mystery and the Temple of Vampires. Jack! Jack! Shut that door! They're coming after us! Oh, close. I, I don't know how to work it. Well, keep your flashlight on him when I get my 45. Get ready to let him have it. Look. Look out, Doc. Stand back. What's that noise, Jack? It's the door. The door is descending. Get back now. Well, what do you know about that? You got it just in time. I didn't shut it. No. I close it. Hey, who said that? I, Manuel, say that. Hello, Manuel. We were looking for you. So? Yeah. Where are you? No, do not turn around. Put your hands above your head. Well, roll me over, vampire, with a gun in his hand. No, no much. Where? Can't see a thing with his flashlight off. To your left, you will see a crack of light. Yeah, you're sure right about that. Over there, Jack. You will go towards it. Sure. When you come to the door, enter. Well, I'm a foot high exclamation point. Yeah, quite a room. A doggone palace. Jack, Doc, you come in. Ain't it been our little friend, Sonny? Oh, I'm so glad. What you doing over yonder in the shadow? I'm, I'm tied up. Now, look, ma'am, well, is that any way to treat a female guest? Keep your hands up. Oh, sure. Are you two prisoners, too? Well, ma'am, well, we've got a horse pistol stuck in our backs, if that's what you mean. Hey, what's going on? The door is closed. No, we will not be disturbed. I will have your weapons. Sure, help yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Now you, talking to me. He... You would back over here to me? Anything you want. Uh, you are kind. You have only one gun? That's all. Good. Then you may both sit down. Take our arms down? See? Thanks. I just can't be friendly with my hands up over my head. Please, you will sit down. Why not? Yeah, yeah. I've had a good look at you. Hey, where'd you get that shiner? China. <laughs> Why, well, blame if you haven't got a good old fashioned American black eye. Oh, the the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that something? Where do you suppose he got that, Jack? I gave it to him. <laughs> you did sure enough, Sonny. Yes, and that's not all he got either. Try to make love to me, will he? <laughs> will you listen to the girl? Sonny, are you all right? If you think I'm not, just untie me and give me another chance at that South American gigolo. Well, what you know of fighting female? See, she is bad one. I tie her up in self-defense. Well, I wish you'd stop pointing the gun at my stomach. It will not go off so long as you are quiet. And yeah, what's supposed to happen now? You ask that after what you have seen? What's that supposed to mean? You have invaded the sacred places of the vampires. You're not kidding them, Manuel, and fella, was I glad when that door come down between us and them. And no man has ever seen the sacred vampires and live to tell it. We saw them and we're still alive. Ah, oh, yes. 
But not for long. Hey, Sonny. Have you seen Manuel's chicken yard? Chicken yard? He's got a whole room full of vampires next door here. Real vampires? A huge bats tall as men. Manuel, where'd you ever get bats as large as that? See, they are the secret vampires. Well, you said that before. Where, where, did, where did they come from? The priests of the temple have bred them for generations. This generation they grow a little bigger, a little more savage, a little more rapacious. And you sacrifice the Indian natives to these creatures? See, it is not often we have white men to sacrifice. They will like it. You got another guest coming, man. Well, so? I wasn't cut out for no human sacrifices. I'm not the type. Well, we shall see. And now I will ask you a question. Shoot. How did you get into the room of vampire? Nothing to it. There was a picture of a vampire on the wall. Under it was a loose stone. I took that out. How did you know there was loose rock? You did not find it yourself. That's right. That little old Angelina vampire told us. Angelina tell you? Yes. She came out in there doing us dirt. I just remembered that, Jack. Well, remember what? When Angelina told us how to open that door, she said it would take us to where Madwell had Sonny. Instead of that, we blame near did a polka with a bunch of vampires. That's the old double cross. <laughs> you can't trust that Angelina dame for, you know, fling her by the hair. So, Angelina, give away secrets of the temple. Yes, and I'll bet that makes her popular with you. <laughs> I do not like Angelina to give away secrets of the temple. Well, look, ma'am, well, old kid, we sure enjoy sitting around chatting with you, but how about a little action for a change? Where is... Angelina dead. Angelina is dead? That's right. No, I I do not believe Angelina is dead. Well, she came monkeying around the plane trying to get hold of the boy Hermie. We shot her. That is very bad thing you tell me. Well, ma'am, well, that only goes to show you what happens when you start biting off more than you chew. The vampires will feast tonight. You have to keep getting back on that subject. Can you think of anything interesting to the talk about? The flares will be lighted, the drums will roll, and the priests of the temple will parade before the altar all night tonight. Well, then you'd better get started. So? Yeah, it's almost 11.30 right now. The time has come. Doggone, he makes a swell villain, don't he, Jack? I will give you your choice. Either of you will go into the room of vampires first. You mean we get to draw straws? Who will go first? Well, how about us going in together? No. No, one at a time. Okay, then how about me? Doc, Doc, you fool, he means it. Take it easy, sonny. Nothing's going to happen to me. I know, I know, but, but what's going to happen? Listen, sugar. An old gypsy woman one time told me I was born to be hung. But how can I be hung if I get gnawed on by a vampire? Jack, don't let him go. Been sitting down so long, mind if I stretch? There. Ah, now I feel better. You do not play tricks. This gun is dangerous. Oh, sure, sure. Ready, Jack? Yeah. Well, what we doing now, Manuel? You see that bare portion of wall? I see it. Well, when I pull this rope, a door will appear. No kidding. See, the, the minute it opens, you step through. And then what? The door closes, and you are in a room of vampires. You don't say. Just as simple as that. Do not hesitate, or I shoot you where you stand. Don't you worry none about that. Once I start, I don't never hesitate. It is well. You are ready. Get him, Jack. Oh! <laughs> All right. All right. Now, you got him, Jack. Ugh. Nice going, Jack. Out like a light. You you got his gun? Yeah, and here's yours mine. Good. Yeah, put up quite a battle. Oh, golly, that was swell. It was marvelous. How are you doing, Jack? Go on, tie Sonny, while I tie up this goon. Doggone pleasure. Oh, Doc, Doc, it's so good to see you boys. Don't hit me no more, huh? I could hug you to death. Well, what are we waiting for? I'm tiny, you fool. <laughs> yeah, reckon that would help. I never saw anything like it, the way you boys work together. You mean that teamwork we used on man well? Yes, it was so fast I could hardly tell what was happening. Uh-huh. There's your feet. Stand up, I'll untie your hands. Oh, you'll have to help me. Come up, you come. Oh, oh, my legs are yeah, asleep. Sit down there, edge of this chair. 
swing your legs. Uh huh. Doc, what did happen? When? I was watching when you were standing up and Manuel had his gun pointed at you. The next thing I knew, you were on the floor and Jack was on top of Manuel. Sure, simple. But it works. Got him to concentrate on me. Jack didn't look dangerous sitting down. Then I dropped to the floor. Jack goes into action. Two fellas in action. At the same time, makes Gumman awful nervous. He don't know where he's at for a minute. And by that time, it's too late. Well, all right. What's, what's going on over there? Hi, Jack. Well, what are you doing? Telling her your life story? There's your hands free. Oh, ah, good. I was afraid I wasn't ever going to see you boys again. You all right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Except I'm a little wobbly. You'll get the kinks out in a little. Got Manuel all sewed up? Yeah, it's not a get out of this place. I haven't the slightest idea how to open the door leading out to the ledge. Oh, I know. I watched him open and close the door several times. All right, good. Show us. All right. Oh, golly. What? Gotcha. Legs won't hold you? Oh, pins and needles. Still numb, huh? Come on, I'll help you. Oh, Jack, do you see that piece of tapestry on the wall? Yeah. Right behind it, there's a rope. Pull on it. That opens the door? Yes. Oh, I just got to sit down, Doc. No, sir. Keep moving around. That's the only way to get circulation going. Oh, you want to torture me. Oh, there she goes. She's opening. All right, come on. Here, Jack. How about his royal highness here? All right, let him stay there. Here, I'll, I'll take your other arm. Oh, thanks. All right. Out you go. Where where are you taking me? Well, back across to the other ledge. Yeah, Reggie would be wondering what's become of us. Wait. Wait a minute. Huh? What's the matter? You, you mean I've got to swing across that rope? It's the only way to get back. Oh, no, I can't. But, Sonny, you've got to. Please, you go on and leave me here. Leave you here? Yes, yes, anything, but don't make me... Hey, what are you talking about? I can't. I tell you, I can't. Oh, so you're going to go female on us again. Doc, I'm sorry. Just a plain female woman who can't take it. But that horrible nausea, 50 feet up in the air. Oh, I think I'm going to be sick. Well, I'm doggone if I ain't ashamed of you, Sonny. I can't help it. All right, that's enough of this. Take her arm, Doc. No, no. Come on, come on. I won't. Let go of me. Hang on to it, Jack. Sonny, stop it. Let go. I hate you. No, no, no. Why, you... Hey, Jack, she's going to live. Yeah, she's faded. I wouldn't just be a nice cat. Yeah, it's just as well. Stay with her while I go get a piece of rope. Sonny, I'm plumb disgusted with women. Throwing a fit and going limp on us. What gets into a woman anyway? And me figuring out one day hitching up to one of them. Honest to Christmas. I'm beginning to think Jack's right. Doc! Doc! Hey, Jack, what's the matter? Hey, what's the matter? Quick, quick! Get to the ledge. The, the vampire bats are out. The bats? Running around loose? What about Manuel? He's gone. I left him tied up, and now he's gone. And the, the bats are coming this way. <laughs> adventure thriller, Temple of Vampires.
Keep us back in the passage way, but they haven't caught our scent yet. Well, I've got Sonny, so it's up to you. A job right down my alley. A forty-five in each hand and just waiting for a chance to use it. We must be almost out on the ledge. Well, watch it, Jack. If you go walking off that ledge of Sonny in your arms, it's 50 feet straight down. I'm feeling my way. Yeah, here we are. Doc, you got the flashlight? Uh, yeah. You, you want it? Flash it around. Find out where we fasten the rope. Won't light be liable to attract them bats' attention? Got a chance of... Huh? Well, there she is. Down yonder, a little to your left. Uh-huh. Now then, I'll put Sonny down for a minute. Don't forget we fastened the rope up out of reach. Yeah. Come on, step in my hand and go up after it. Okay. Uh-huh. Hold it. I got it. Yeah. There. Now fasten it on the lower hook where I can reach it. Okay. Ooh, we. Boy, I don't blame Sonny for not liking high places. Well, never mind that, Doc. Help me. Uh, do what? I'm going to take Sonny across on my back. Unconscious body's kind of awkward. Does the thing we can do it? Yeah. Lift her up on my back. Uh-huh. Uh, here she comes. Now hold her up while I get hold of her legs. Check. How's that? All right. Now back against the wall and hold her in place. <laughs> Now, come around in front. Good as done. I've got her legs around my waist. I'll tie them together. Now, here's a piece of rope. Oh, yeah, I get the idea. We'll do a good job of tying. If she starts to slip going over, there'll be nothing I can do. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> hey, I have a hold. Now, I'll tie her around, around my neck. Uh-huh. Jack, she's, uh, she's going to be a load. Yeah, Manuel brought her over here. Uh, yeah. That'll fix her arms. But uh, Manuel's had a lot of practice. Well, he isn't going to practice anymore. Those vampire bats, uh, sure enough, got him. We left him on the floor tied up, and when I went back, he was gone. Hey, hey, listen. Uh, what is it? I keep feeling that I hear shuffling noises all about me. Shuffling? Well, not exactly. Uh, more like little sucking noises. You know what? Uh... Oh, that's great. Oh, fella, uh, how are we going to work this now? I'll take Sonny over on this rope. You take the rope down the ledge further. Oh, yeah, a manual rope. Yeah. Okay? Sure. All right, before I jump, go down and see if your rope's all right. Good idea. Doc! Doc, what's the matter? I got it, Jack. I got it. You all right? You better. I'm all right. Did you hear the flapping of wings as he went over? What was it? What happened? Well, just one of them big he bats are sitting there on the ledge making sucking noises at me. They're out on the ledge? Well, that was one. I let him have it, and he high-dived off the ledge. It's time we were getting out of here. Is your rope all right? Right as rain. All right, then, let's go. And remember to hang on to that rope like you never hung on before. You're carrying double. Uh-huh. There. I'll get a good grip with my knees. How's that? All right. Now, don't waste any time, Doc. The minute I hop off, you go down and take off on your rope. You think I won't? Well, here I go. Look, Jack. Uh, yeah. Be seeing you! Man, that's like high diving in space. Well, come on, Doc, my lad. We're next. Get my rope down. There. Hey, what's that? Look out! Hey, hey, Jack! Jack, what's the matter with Sonny? Just fainted. Come on, get her untied and off my back. You brought her across on that rope? Made it all right. Here, unfasten her feet. Well, just... Just a minute. Everything been all right over here? Yes, as good as gold. I'm used to the sleep. Angelina unhappy, but behaving herself. There. There's Sonny's feet. Now untie her hands around my neck. Yeah. I'm getting it. What made her faint? Fright of having to swing across. Oh. Did you have a bad time of it? Where's Doc? He'll be here in a minute. Swinging over on another rope. You chaps are getting to be regular trapeze performers. Uh, there she is. All right. Lift her down off my back. Quite. There. Uh. There, I got her. Now, put her on that stone bench alongside of Hermie. She shouldn't be out long. It was just a thing. Mm. There she is. She'll be all right. What's the matter, Jack? Well, hello. You awake, Hermie? I guess so. Now you better go back to sleep. Who's lying here beside me? Sonny. Sonny? Has she come back? That's right. But, Jack, I haven't got any clothes on. I don't want Sonny to see me. <laughs> well, you've got a loincloth. That'll have to do you in the morning. Besides, it's dark. I wish those fellas would give me back my clothes. Why doesn't she say something? Sonny? Well, she, uh, she's asleep. She'll, she'll wake up pretty soon. Uh, I hope she don't until I get my clothes back. Well, that seems to bother you a lot, youngster. Yeah, sure it does. Fella don't feel right without clothes. Well, you go back to sleep. We'll take care of you in the morning. I ain't sleepy now. We'll try. 
Okay. Jack? Hmm? Isn't it queer Doc hasn't come? I uh, know. I wonder if he's up to something. Mm. Uh, you know Doc. Crazy idiot. I told him to follow me right over. Well, you don't, don't suppose anything's gone wrong? Huh? I don't see how it could. The bats were loose over there, but they couldn't get at him on the ledge. Here's my flashlight, the gun. Mm. Seems kind of queer, though. Well, let's get out of this priest's cell. Out on the ledge? Yeah. Hey, can I go too? Hermie, you were going to sleep. Oh, gee whiz. Anyway, you stay right where you are. We've got enough trouble without you falling off the ledge. Okay, fella. Come on, Reggie. Not a sign of it. No. I wonder if I shouldn't go back over. Get those blood-sucking rodents loose? Bats aren't rodents. Well, they are for my money. Anyway, these big things don't look like any rodents I ever saw. Couldn't be called across to him? No, well, not at this distance. Echo just makes a din. Uh, I guess I'd better go. How about letting me go over? No, I've got the hang of the thing. Besides, I know the layout over there. And I was hoping this would be the end of these crazy acrobatics. So did I. If Doc's just stalling over there, I'll wring his neck. And once for me. Well, here I go. Too bad. Good luck. Yeah. Oh, Reggie. Yes, Jack? Keep a close guard on the door of the monk's cell. I think those creatures finished off, Manuel, but... He disappeared. He just may have got away. I imagine he'll be a pretty dangerous customer by now. He won't stop at anything. So watch out. I'll be watching. All right. So long. Here goes. Wait, sir. <laughs> well, what's that? Doc, Doc, is that you? Jack. What's happened here? Well, it's like we met out here in midair. Our ropes are all tangled together. Yeah. Well, what you doing out here? I was just going back across to find you. Well, here I am. Down here swinging 50 feet from the floor. Anyway, that far from the ceiling. You think that's funny? I don't think it's one blame bit funny. Hey, hey, well, we're spinning. Our, our ropes are coming untangled. Look, hang on to each other's ropes. Let's keep together for a minute. Yeah. What happened, Doc? We shouldn't have met out here. Our ropes are 10 or 15 feet apart. Yeah, I know. I, I was swinging in a circle. Oh, that's a big help. I couldn't help it, Jack. Just as I got a hold of my rope, something pushed me off the ledge. Pushed you off? Yeah, a minute sooner, and I wouldn't have had the rope in my hands. You didn't see what did it? No. Anyway, I went off the ledge sideways, and that threw me in a circle. I never even come close to our ledge. Well, we're in one swell pickle. You're telling me. Then when you come along, our ropes crossed, and here we are. Well, we can't hang here all night, that's certain. What if we could? Daylight wouldn't help none, except show us how far it is to the floor. That's great. And down in this part of the country... I don't imagine they got any firemen with nets to jump into. Look, Doc. Yeah? You think you can climb your rope? Climb 50, 60 feet on this rope? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Can you? I can try. When we've climbed it, what then? Maybe we can climb over rafters or something. Get down. Uh, you think so? Whoever put these ropes up in the first place had to get up there to fasten them. Well, the longer we just hang here, the tired we're going to be. All right. Let's swing apart, then, and start climbing. Okay. <laughs> man, oh, man. What's the matter? I was just thinking. We're swinging from the end of a rope, but I didn't... I wouldn't say we were hung yet. All right. Cut loose. Okay. Every man for himself. Here goes. Good luck, Jack. Oh, stop. Yeah? Don't try to do much climbing while the rope swings. Take your breath, Ellen, and climb. Yes, I know, Hermie, but Jack told you to go to sleep. I've been trying, Reggie, honest. <laughs> Just can't make it, eh? I guess it's on account I haven't got any clothes. Well, you got all the clothes the Indians wear. I guess I would make a very good Indian. You get used to it in time. Where'd Jack go? He went back across to the other ledge to look for Doc. This is a hard place to keep folks together, ain't it? Well, it certainly is. Is Sonny still asleep? Still sleeping. I guess the vampire lady is asleep, too. Mm, at least pretending. Not a peep out of her for an hour. Oh, it's sure dark in here, ain't it, Reggie? It is that. I keep stumbling. Only way I can keep track of all of you is to make the rounds and touch them. You want to look out when you touch the vampire lady. Oh, is that so? Yeah, she bites. Remember how she bit Doc? Yeah, I keep away from her teeth. <laughs> they are funny people down here, don't they? They do that. Aren't you just a little sorry now? You stowed away in our plane, came along? No, I like you, fellas. Well, that's nice of you. Say so? Yeah. I guess I like Sonny best of all. Ladies, man, are you? I'm going to stick to Sonny all the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Well, have you mentioned it to her? Not yet. But I ain't got anyone else. Well, what about your father? Oh, he didn't want me. He said I was just one more thing he had to look after. I'm not much of a father. I like you fellas a lot better. Do you? Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what's keeping Jack and Doc. 
I guess you don't have to work. No? No, uh, there ain't nothing they can do. No, I don't know. We're running up against things this trip we've never experienced before. Listen. Did, did you hear anything? No. Did you? Something just made my back hair stand up on end. Did what? Listen, listen. I think I'll step out to the door of the cell and have a look about. Don't go very far. No, just to the door. Yeah. Mm, everything seems to be all right. Oh, look out! Let me see what you are! I ain't got a sight on my hands! Hey, come on out of the net! See? That is good. You mean, you mean one of us is going over? And what is you? And now I'm on top for a change. You will die on floor far below. Crushed like eggshell. Well, I'll believe it when it happens. See, it will happen. Huh? Well, try this on your jaw. That's what you get for sticking your chin out. I'll drag you back into the cell. There. Another chicken in the coop. Reggie, huh? is that you? No doubt about it, Hermie. We met the enemy, and he is ours. I don't want him. Well, we have him. <laughs> We're going to keep him, too. He has a nice long cord around his middle to tie him with. Who is it? Well, in the dark, it's hard to say. But I think he's our old friend Manuel, even though Jack thought the vampire bats got him. We'll soon see as soon as I tie him up. Have we, uh, have we got a flashlight? Jack's got one. Oh, I know that. You haven't got a piece of paper in your pocket, have you? I haven't got any pockets. Hmm. I ain't even got any clothes. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting in the dark. The original loincloth kid. Are you tying him up? As a matter of fact, job's nearly finished. He was. I wish I could get some clothes before Sonny wakes up. Why do you wish that, Hermie? Hey, she's away. Hello, Sonny. You back with us? Apparently. Where are we? Hey, you better lay still. Reggie's tying up a guy. Tying up a guy? That's quite. And... The job's complete. Hey, are we are we still over on the ledge with the sacred vampires? Now, don't worry. You're safely across and in one of the monks' cells. How did I get back? Well, you fainted. Jack carried you over on his back. Now then, I'll strike a match and have a look at this chappy we just captured. Well, there, there's so much I don't know. Uh-huh. So it is, Manuel. What's that? That's right. I've just tied up the high priest himself. That is not true. Who's that? <laughs> That's Angelina, the high priestess. Well, is she here too? <laughs> Very much here. She's been our captive for a couple of hours now. You have not got Manuel. You don't think we have? No, I do not think so. Well, he'll wake up in a minute and he can tell you himself. But I don't know anything that's happened since Manuel kidnapped me from the plane. Oh, where are Jack and Doc? Still over on the other ledge. Jack brought you over and then went back. But, but how do we all happen to be here? Well, after I was knocked out and you were stolen, Jack and Doc locked me in the plane with Hermie and came after you. Well, then Angelina over there came perching around on the plane trying to get at Hermie. Like the ballet bloke I am, I opened the door thinking to capture her and was knocked out again and Angelina grabbed the boy. And that's when I lost my clothes. What do you mean, lost your clothes? The fellas took my clothes. There's the priests in black robes. They gave him a loincloth. Yeah, and I'm sure glad it's dark. <laughs> Hermie, I think you'd look wonderful in the loincloth. Well, anyway, when Angelina came up to the ledge with Hermie to swing over to the other side, Jack and Doc grabbed her. Then Doc came back to the plane and got me, and here we've been ever since. Manuel kidnapped me at 9 o'clock last night. Mm -hmm. What time is it now? Just past midnight. Goodness, what a lot can happen in three hours. Mm. Well, I wish Doc and Jack would get back. How do you feel? All right. I'm sitting up. Jack said you collapsed on the other ledge from being scared. Still. Oh, please. You don't like that? I feel lousy enough about what I did without talking oh, about it. Oh, but see here, can't a person help it if it... No, a person can help it if he's not a complete washout. Well, we all have our weaknesses. Yeah, well, mine's being female. Yeah, well, you'll feel better in the morning. I don't know how I'm ever going to face Jack and Doc again after that silly scene. I... Well, you just forget it. Hey, Reggie. Hmm? Yeah? I've never seen Angelina yet. May I? If you want to. But it'll have to be by the light of a match. Well, that'll do. What do you do? Sonny wants to look at you. So? Hello. I kill you. Angelina, you're really beautiful. You are blonde, no? That's right. No blonde woman is beautiful. Oh, is that friendly? I am more beautiful than you. Yes, I think you are. 
But I have a better temper. Yes, that's right. You've never bitten Doc yet. What's that? Angelina here sunk her teeth into him twice. Go away. Why such bitterness, Angelina? What have I ever done to you? You tried to steal Manuel, no? I tried to steal Manuel. Mm. It's the other way around. He stole me. You keep away from Manuel. With pleasure. Where is Hermie? Over on the other stone bench. Tell Hermie to come here. You hear that, Hermie? What did you say? Angelina wants you. No, I don't like her. He doesn't like you, he says. That is not true. I give him figs to eat. Girl meets boy, girl gives boy figs, but apparently girl doesn't get boy. Mm-hmm, she does not. Now then, let's see what's happening to Manuel. He should be coming around. Got another match? A uh, whole box. Well, hello there, Manuel. You're awake, huh? See. Si. Hello, Manuel. You say hello to me? Sure. You're a rat, but what the heck? Oh, I'm a rat. Didn't I tell you the boys would fix you for trying to get fresh? Uh, I make love. You say I get fresh. What is sense in that? Manuel. See? Si? You make love with your girl? See, si, Angelina. I make love with her. So? See, si, but she will not make love with me. That is what you said. That's right, Angelina. He got fresh and I socked him. You, you hit Manuel? Oh, did I hit him? Lady, you should see his eye. That is sacrilege. He is high priest. <laughs> Which side of the fence are you on? First you hate me because you thought I went for him. Now you're mad because I didn't. And Helena is a woman. <laughs> yes, sir, I guess that explains everything. See, it explains everything and nothing. Yes, but look here, Manuel. How did you get over here? Over here? Over on this ledge. Last we heard from you, you were on the other ledge. Jack thought the bats had you. Sacred vampires? No, they do not touch me. Ugly critters must not be as vicious as we thought. They were in the same room with you. I am Manuel, the high priest, and I suppose that explains everything, huh? See, si. Jack said he had one rope and Doc had the other. How could you get off the ledge if you didn't have a rope? There is secret passage. You mean you really don't need a rope to get up on that ledge? That is true. Well, now, isn't that interesting? Tell me, where are those other two? And the two? You mean Jack and Doc? See, si. They're still over on the other ledge. Over with the sacred vampires, right? Okay. But I did not see them over there. Just the same, that's where they are, and I wish they'd get back. Reggie? Hmm? Are you sure they're over there? Of course I'm sure. I was outside when Jack swung out. It's funny Manuel didn't see them. What do you intend to do with me? Hold you right here until Jack and Doc get back. I do not think they will come back, ever. You'd better forget that sort of talk. Yes, what do you mean? They will not come back. They just better had. So? Yes, because if they don't, I'll pitch you and your girlfriend off this ledge and don't think I'm not the man who can do it. They will not come back. You'll start praying that they do if you know what's good for you. An eye for an eye is how we say the Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller, Temple of Vampire. <sighs> Jack? Yes? I got a rest in. All right. How much further you think we got to go? Up 10 or 15 feet, I imagine. Yeah. My hands and arms ache like toothache. Yeah, my hands are getting numb. We must be about 80 or 90 feet up from the floor. That's pleasant. Well, what do you say, Jack? I say that's a pleasant thought. Oh, yeah. Well, shall we try it again? Might as well. <sighs> Doc! Yeah, Jack? Gotta rest again. <sighs> you and me both. Made about five or six feet that time, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I got me a system of wrapping a rope around my leg so as I can kind of sit down and rest. Yeah, it helps. I sure hope there's some place for us to go when we get up there. There's got to be. Well, there better be. I don't like being a hundred feet up in the air with no place to go except straight down. Well... Let's go again. Okay. Ah. 
Hey, Jack. Jack. Yeah? We must be almost up. Our rope's getting a lot steadier. Yeah, I was beginning to feel it. It's hardly swaying at all. Must be only five or six feet from where the rope's fastened to the ceiling. Should make it on our next try. Son, them's the best words I've heard in years. Feel stronger already. Well, let's go then. You bet, too. Hey, hey, Jack, Jack, I- I'm touching it. I'm touching it. Good boy. And how about you? Wait a minute. Yes, yes. Can you tell what the rope's fastened to? See, see some kind of a rock beam. Yeah, same here. Well, now, now we're up, what? Get up on the beam. Yeah, but how? Well, swing our legs up and... Hook them around the beam, I guess. Oh, that's great. What's the matter with that? Yeah, and there we are, hanging head down, a hundred feet up in the air. Well, I'm going to try it. Well, you watch out, fella. You ain't allowed no mistakes up here. Don't be so optimistic. Well, look out below. Here I go. Keep a grip on the rope. Hey, Jack, what's that? It sounds like an earthquake. Boy, did this old temple sway. Are you all right? Yeah. It's a well place to watch an earthquake from, too. As if we didn't have enough trouble without that. You all right? I'm still hanging on, and that's what you mean. Well, what happened? Part of the roof fell in. And here we are hanging to the rest of the ceiling like a couple of flies. The further adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at the same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Cosme Morris, comes to you Monday through Friday featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, Tony Randall as Reggie York, with Mercedes McCambridge as Sonny, Louis Van Roten as Manuel, Sarah Fussell as Hermie, and Alice Reinhardt as Angelina. of the century. That's the next brawling, exciting story in the lives of Jack, Doc, and Reggie on I Love a Mystery. Meet Miss Jack Dempsey Ross. Meet Jim Ross, the man who loves a fight better than his own daughter. Tell everyone, the battle of the century is coming next on I Love a Mystery. Broadcasting System. This place I was ever in. Anything in particular? A few minutes ago, the whole outdoors was black as a coal bin, horror and terror creeping all around us. When the dawn breaks and all you can hear is a million songbirds. Yeah, a lot of contrast, all right. I'll say contrast. You sleep, Hermie? No, just lying here. You've cut quite a figure. Nothing but a loincloth and Jack's coat. Well, Jack's coat is better than nothing. Now that it's beginning to get light, I've got to do something. But what, Reggie? Go back in that bat's nest of a temple. But but what about Hermie and me? All I know is Doc and Jack went across to the other ledge and haven't come back. But but that earthquake last night. There's great cracks in the wall. Part of the roof fell in. 
The rest of it might go at any moment. Are you suggesting I don't go? With Jack and Doc in there? No. Well, now that I can see what I'm doing, I'm going. I could bash my own brains out for having turned Manuel and Angelina loose. But you had to, Reggie. As it turned out, I didn't have to. But I thought I did. I thought the whole temple was falling in. It only seemed human to cut them free and give them an equal chance of escape. Of course. Manuel said there wasn't a way of getting to that other lead by stairs, but if I had him here now, I, I would force him to show me the way. Well, he isn't here. Yeah, so I've got to do the best I can. Well, at least let's keep it all together. Yes, we will. And look here. Yes? I'm going to trust you with my extra revolver. Reggie, I... I... What's the matter? It's protection, even in your hands. But... I've never shot a gun. Now, didn't you tell me all there was to using a gun was pulling the trigger? Yes, but... Well, then take it. If Manuel or anyone else gets in your way, pull the trigger. Well, all right. Only take the trouble of pointing the muzzle in the enemy's direction. All right, come on. We, we're going back to the temple? And that's where we're going. Up with you, Hermie. Yeah, sure. Come along. Gee, I, I don't like it. You think I do? It doesn't look like we're ever going to get away from this temple, does it? Uh, no use crying. Hey, I ain't crying. Yeah, of course you're not. You Here we go in. Gee, will you look? Good part of the roof, right here in the middle of the floor, all right. Hey, look at the hole in the roof. Yes, almost half the roof down. You can see daylight through. Reggie, Reggie, look. Yeah, and what's that? Up against the ceiling where the light comes in. Isn't there somebody up there? Oh, that's crazy. A hundred feet up there. No, no, I'm right. There are two people up there. Yeah, I see them. I say, it looks like it... It it wouldn't be Jack and Doc, would it? Oh, but what would they be doing up there? I don't know, but there are two people up there, all right. I, I can see a white shirt. Jack had on a white shirt. Well, maybe his bare skin. I... Well, anyway, white shirt or white skin, Jack and Doc are the only ones in this part of the world. Uh, they just seem to be clinging up there. You, you suppose they're in trouble? If you were in that position, what would you say? But, but what is there to do? Could we get their attention, do you think? If we can, they might signal what we can do to help. Oh, it makes me dizzy just to look. I'm going to yell. Watch them. Hello? Jack? Hello? The dog? You can't tell from here whether they hear or not. I wish the blooming sun would come up. Give us more light. Can I yell, Reggie? Go ahead. Hello? 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 Yeah, nothing to tell whether they hear or not. You suppose voices don't reach up there? No, they wouldn't understand words, but they should hear a noise. Hey, look. There's a piece of paper. Piece of paper? There it goes, floating down. Oh, yes, it, it must be a message. Oh, I sure hope so. Oh, I'll get it. Careful. Careful you don't step on a sharp rock in your bare feet. All right. I'd give a lot to know what they're doing up there anyway. I, I just can't look anymore. I got it. Good boy. Yeah, here it is. Thanks. Is it Jack and Doc? Yes. They say for us to get outside this temple and stay out. I, is that all? No. Want us to go out on the temple steps and wait for them there. But what's that for? I don't know. How will they get down on the outside of the temple? Well, let's not ask questions. Do what we're told. Come along. Well, there they go, Jack. Yeah. Now, if we fall, at least they won't have to witness the great event. You still got yourself tied into place with your rope? Yeah. Well... We got some light. Don't you think we ought to make the big try? It's no, I never. You got any ideas? I just haven't got the strength of my arms to pull myself up on that raft. Yeah, it's light enough to see the setup. I'm beginning to get an idea. Anybody got any ideas at a time like this? I'm all for them. Well, look. We're hanging just below this big stone girder. Now, the girder must be a foot and a half square. The ropes we're on are tied around it. So what? Well, if I swing my legs up and, and get them around the girder... You mean hang a hundred feet up in the air? Here by your knees? No, I'll have to. Well, keep that rope tied around you in case you slip. Ah, that's the point. I've got to untie the rope around my waist and see if I can't pull up the, enough slack to heave over the girder. Well, you're hanging head down by your knees? If I can do it, I can make a sort of a swing out of the rope, which I can stand in and then climb up to the girder. You can't do it, Jack. Hang head down like that with the blood all rushing to your head. I'll oh, cut out that sort of talk. I've got to do it. Yeah. And here goes. You're untying the rope to your waist? Yeah. 
Jackson, be careful. There. I'm swinging free. Take your legs will hold you, even if you do get him up around the girder. Yeah. Soon find out. Don't forget you're pretty tuckered out. We've been up here about four hours. All right. Here goes. There. There. Got my feet locked over the girder. Good going. Keep hanging on with one hand, though. I can't. I need both hands to pull up the rope. Take her easy, Jack. Up, up she comes. Oh. Oh. All right. Oh. How much slack have I got? About eight, ten feet. Hey, what's the matter with your voice? I don't know. Feel the blood beating in my ears. I've got to heave this slack over the beam. Jack, you be careful if the blood goes to your head. She goes. Oh. Jack. Jack, your legs are slipping. Hang on that rope. Come out, Jack. Yeah, I, I got it. I got it. Jack, don't never do that to me again. I'm all right. And the slack went over the beam. Look, I got a loop to stand on. Jack, you're so near heaven, I can hear the angel's wings flapping. Oh, never mind that. No, I can get out of me. Girder, I'm not wasting any time. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. You made it, Jack. You made it. Yeah. Let me get my breath just a minute. I'll crawl along the beam and give you a hand here. Take your time, son. The worst is over. Well, we're still alive. I've never seen such a guy. I'd have stayed right there and starved to death before I tried to do what you did. You coming over? Yeah. We've got to get down from here and get some breakfast, huh? <laughs> Can of tomatoes, piece of chocolate. That sounds great. Now then, we'll make a quick work of this. You aren't going to try and pull me up, are you? No, reach down and get a hold of the rope below where you're tied onto it. Yeah. Now, hand it up. Sixty feet hanging rope. Got some weight to it. Yeah. All right, I got it. I'll float it over the beam and make a, a loop for you to stand in. You can scramble up the same way I did. Yeah, hold it. That, that's about right. All right, come on. You don't have to say that twice. And here I am. All right. Straddle the beam and get to work. Get to work? Yeah. Start pulling in your rope so we can uh, hold on the lower end, and I'll do the same on my rope. Hey, I'll get it. I will. We'll tie the ends of the two ropes together and cut one of the ropes loose from the girder. Oh, so that's an eight rope. Six feet. Tied together will give us 120 feet of rope. Yeah. It's only a hundred feet to the floor. With a brain, tie the ropes together and slide down to the floor. <coughs> Here comes my end of the rope. Yeah. Now bring it over. Mine's coming up. Yeah. A funny thing, Jack. Yeah. What's that? Here we are, scampering back and forth across a foot and a half beam, hundred feet in the air, and thinking of nothing of it. Now this beam seems like home after swinging by a rope all night. It ain't a fact. Yeah. Give me the end of your rope. Yeah. Splice them good. We don't want no slips now. Not after all the luck we've had. All right. You got your jackknife? Yeah. Go back where your rope is tied to the beam. When I give you the word, cut it loose. You bet. Just say the word. Funny how we go up to 10,000 feet in an airplane, think nothing of it. Here we are up 100 feet and think it's forever. All right. She's all ready. Cut her loose. Yeah. Put down below. Whoopee! There she goes. All right, come on. Elevator service to the ground floor. Well, what you waiting for? I'm right behind you. All right. Here I go over the side. Yeah. Yes, sir. We're almost home now, fella. There. Oh, Doc. Yeah? Hand over hand. Don't try sliding. Why not? Uh, it's too much of a chance of burning your hands or losing your grip. Come on. Okay. There. Boy, is this rope familiar? You on the rope? Yep, yeah, and I'm coming fast, so keep going. Not too fast now. <laughs> Is this easier than climbing up? I'm, I'm down to the notch. Well, that's more halfway. Yippee! <laughs> Watch out below! Doc, you crazy fool. I don't know where I'm stuck. So good. Well, hold it, will you? Jack, get out of my way. I'm going to take the last 20 feet in one jump. Break your fool neck yet. Not me, fella. How are you coming? I'm down. You're down? Yeah, look out for me. Whoopee! <coughs> oh, so I am. 
Man, don't sell a ground for you. Come on. Let's go find Reggie. Yes, sir. Maybe me and the monkeys have something in common, but climbing ropes ain't one of them. I told them in my notes to wait on the steps. Yeah, I know. There they are. Hi, Reggie. Doc, Jack. Oh, we've been almost out of our minds. What's there to worry about on a nice morning like this? So, after all, you made it down all right. Well, naturally, we made it. Gee, fellas, you was awful high up the last time I saw you. Oh, thank goodness we're all together again. Reggie, where are our two captives? Manuel and Angelina? Yes. They're free. Hey, they got away. I turned them free during the earthquake. Thought the whole temple was falling in. Well, ain't that a sweet smelling kettle of fish? Really? There wasn't anything else to do. Oh! What's that? It, it's another earthquake. Come on. Get away from the temple. Earthquake! 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 The whole blessed temple is what? adventure thriller, Temple of Vampires. Six o'clock in the evening at the crippled airplane somewhere in the jungles near tropical Nicaragua. After a second night of mystery and terror, the three boys, Jack, Doc, and Reggie, are together again with the girl, Sonny, and the youngster, Hermie. During the night, an earthquake shook the Temple of Vampires so that a portion of the great roof tumbled in. Reggie freed the two captives, Manuel and Angelina, and rushed Sonny and Hermie from the temple, fearing all would be crushed in the daybreak. Then at four o'clock this morning, just after the three had been rejoined by Jack and Doc on the steps of the temple, a second earthquake set the earth to rocking and the temple to shaking. And as the five filed down the jungle path to the lake, the great cathedral crumbled and tumbled in on itself, burying everything which remained inside beneath millions of tons of stone and rubble. And now at six o'clock in the evening of the same day, the five are resting on the ground near the airplane. If you ask me, this is a day for a celebration. You sure enough got an idea there, Reg. Eh? Why do you say that? Hasn't Reggie told you? <laughs> no. What is it? Well, he's been a tinkering with the undercarriage of the plane and got it in shape for a takeoff. No. Really? That's well, a... it will be ready by the middle of the morning tomorrow. Oh, golly, that's wonderful. You mean we're going to fly away from here tomorrow? Doggone if we ain't, Hermie. Well, well, will you take me someplace where I can get some clothes to wear? For <laughs> <laughs> Hermie. But I don't mind, really. You don't? No, I think you look swell in the loincloth. Yeah? Sure. The only thing to wear in this kind of weather. Well, I don't know. I like pants better. Well, fella, the, the first thing we do when we take off is to go somewhere where we can buy you a pair of pants. Okay. No, how about the gas? Gasoline, Jack. Well, we've still got to strain it before we dare take off. Mm. But, Jack, we'd look high and low for something big enough to strain it into, and there ain't nothing. I know it. See, I... Hmm? Well, I've been thinking about something. <laughs> Maybe it's crazy. Oh, what is it? Well, well, don't laugh, will you? <laughs> Looky, honey, we need ideas. Sometimes the crazier they are, the better they work. Well... What about the waterproof air mattresses? We've got four of them. There you are, Jack. That's it. Well, doggone. 
Who says a female of the species ain't worth her weight in salt? You mean... Sonny, you paid for your passage on this trip a hundred times over. It'll work? Why, sure it'll work. Now, look, Jack, we got a couple of five-gallon cans. We can strain the gas into them and then pour the clean gas into the rubber mattresses. Yes, each one of them should hold, oh, 50 gallons easily. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on. It'll take most of the night to strain it. Now you're talking. I'll get up on the plane and dig out the five-gallon cans and some chamois cloth. Can I help? You bet your sweet life you can, son. Everybody can help. The easiest way will be to drain the gas out of the tank directly into a chamois and let it run down into a can. When the can's full, pour it into the air mattress while the second didn't fill it. Oh. oh what's the matter with you? Well, doggone it, it makes a girl feel good to find out she's worth something. A girl don't need uh, anything but good looks. But when she's got good looks and brains, too, she's too it. <laughs> Does this sort of make up for the way I fainted it up on the leg? Oh, are you still worrying about that one? Sugar, after this bright idea, you can faint all over the place. <laughs> ah, here come the tin cans. <laughs> got the chamois? Yeah. Catch him? I got him. All right. I'll heave the air mattresses out as soon as I can break them up. Okay. And with a gas drain and undercarriage fixed up, I'm not bad at nobody. Well, here, give me those chamois. I'll get the gas to draining. Okay, uh, you want some help? No, this is a one-man job. You can pour the gas into the mattresses. Bring along one of those empty tins, Yeah, sure. Oh, what an experience. <laughs> well, how about it? You glad you had it? Yeah, Doc, I am. But honest to goodness, I will be get, glad to get back to the United States. Hey, what about Peru and Ecuador? Yeah, well, civilization anyhow. Yeah, I could sleep in a bed and put my feet under a table again at that. I feel awful about that temple. Oh, you mean about that there earthquake or knocking it into a cock hat? No, not the temple, but Manuel and Angelina and all the acolytes of the temple... They must all have been buried under those tons and tons of stones. Yeah, I guess. Vampire worship in this part of the country went out of existence in one whopping big spectacle. Well, I guess we did all we could. Here come the mattresses. Okay, Jack. We went back to see if we could save anybody, but it was hopeless. Yeah, it'll take a wrecking crew years to dig everything out of that mess. And anyway, uh, Sonny, we don't know for sure that anybody was caught in there. Oh, but they must have been. There's one thing I'm glad of, though. And what's that? That all those horrible vampire bats were destroyed. At least there won't be any more Indian sacrifice. Yeah. Only don't you think the Indians are going to be awful lonesome for a while without their religion? Mm-hmm. Aren't human beings funny creatures? They are. Okay. All right, Doc. I've got a full can for you. And a boy, Reggie. Looks like I got work to do, Sonny. Let me help with everything you might All right, now stand back, Sonny. But well, I got to learn about well, things, Reggie. Right? Just keep your eyes open. How's it working, Reg? Smooth as silk. Get that uh, can empty and come back here, huh? This other one's almost full. Sure thing. <clears throat> come with me, Hermie. Okay. You got something for me to do? You bet. You're going to come in mighty handy. You got the mattresses ready, Jack? Yeah. I had to clip off the metal part where you pump the air in so I could get a hole large enough to put a funnel in. Uh-huh. All right, Hermie, come here. Sure. Now, look, you hold the funnel in this hole in the mattress while I pour. Can you do that? Of course I can. That's easy. That a boy. Now, now, hold it still. Hold it still. No, Jack. Hmm? I just thought of something I can do. What's that? Well, we got started on this before we had any dinner. How about me digging out some food and passing it around while you folks are working? Swell idea. All right. You hungry, Doc? Lady, you don't know the half of it. So am I, Sonny. All right. Tonight's dinner is my department. <laughs> you know, Jack, she's honestly Grandma downright happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just the idea that she helped us out of a scrape made her forget all about her being female. Uh, yeah, that's all of them. Then I'll go over and give Reggie a hand. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Uh, how are we going to fasten these mattresses to keep the gas from leaking out? Well, just let them lie flat. If the gas levels off, it won't run out. Uh-huh. Okay, Hermie, that's the end of that can. Yeah. Hermie, you calling me, Sonny? Uh-huh. Can you help me for a minute? Can I go? Sure, run along. Yeah, I can help you. All right, come on. <laughs> Busy in a couple of birds, though. What do you need me for? Oh, well, look. Uh, take these canteens of water while I climb down out of the plane. Yeah, sure. Can you reach them? Yeah. Yep, I got him. Thank you. <laughs> Look out, coming down. You don't hear your slacks again. Oh, I don't worry about a little thing like that anymore. <laughs> Why, you were doing all right. Well, from you, Ernie, I take that as a compliment. Yeah, that was almost like a salad, do <laughs> All right, now, we'll open some cans of tomatoes. You want to eat some? Sure. But you hate cold tomatoes out of a can. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. Yeah? Mm-hmm. 
I'm getting so I love cold tomatoes out of a can. You do? Sure. But, but don't you tell that. Oh, no, I won't tell anybody. Oh, thanks. You know something, Tony? What's that? Well, gee, this has been swell. Oh, you think so? I mean, being with all you folks. Oh, well, we've enjoyed you too, then. Yeah, only... Only what? Well, I don't know what's going to happen to me when we get back to the United States. Oh. Yeah, um, my old man doesn't want me, and, and anyway, I don't know where he is now. Mm hmm Yeah? Do you want to close your head on when we find it? Sure. But they were nice smooth clothes, all pressed and clean. Where did you get those? You, you won't be mad at me if I tell you. Well, of course not. Well, just before my old man took me out to the airport, he took me into a turkey's bath and gave me the worst scrubbing I ever had. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed they were nice and clean. Yeah. <laughs> then then we went into a place, you know, where they clean and press clothes. Mm -hmm. Well, we went in. When the fellow wasn't looking, my old man grabbed his shoe. You mean, stole it? You mad? Oh, but honey, you didn't do it. Oh, I didn't want him to do it. But he said a kid going on a trip had to be all dressed up. Mm -hmm. And so that's how you came to us all dressed up and nice and clean. Yeah. I guess you can be arrested for what my old man did. Well, you just forget about that, see? That part of your life is all over. It is? You bet it is. Now then, how about helping me hand out the food to the workers? You're all right. Well, let's see now. We'll each slip a canteen over our shoulders. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, first we'll take the cocktails around. Cocktails? Uh-huh. Cans of tomatoes. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> You take those two cans, and I will take these three. You ready? Sure. Right, let's go. All right, boys. First course coming up. Well, doggone. Now, that's what I call thirsty. Here's one for you, Jack. Thanks. Here you are, Reggie. Ah, oh, thank you, honey. Hey, look. Let, let's drink to our takeoff tomorrow. In canned tomatoes? Well, sure. Why not? Here's to heading for civilization at 12 noon tomorrow. I give you a safe takeoff for the happy landing. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sonny, I see you're drinking cold tomatoes out of a can and uh, apparently liking it. Yeah? Well, a girl can't be female all her life. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I tell you? All you needed was a little experience. That's right, Reggie. All right, Hermie, now let's go back for the cheese and the crackers and the dessert. Dessert, uh, being in a bar of chocolate. Right, a bar of chocolate. With nice warm water to wash it off. <laughs> Plain if I ain't proud of the way she's coming along. How about it, Jack? Now, Doc, don't tell me you're thinking of uh, marrying the girl. <laughs> oh, no, i not thinking of marrying the girl, but, well, doggone it, she ain't going to make somebody a good wife. Mm. Yeah, I know. You don't think any girl makes a man a good wife. Here's another can of gas, Hampty. Jack, you you make me bum aggravated sometimes. The prejudice that you've got against wings. I said there's another can of gas to empty. Yeah, I heard you. Well, anyway, I like him. No. Yeah, I do so. Why, fella, where had future generations come from if it wasn't for women? Are you asking me or telling me? <laughs> That's quite. Answer that one. Well, I'm telling you. All right. Where would future generations come from if it wasn't for women? Well, uh, what's that? Well, well blame them, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> oh, the blaze is with it. You never get any place arguing with a you. Give me that can of gas. <laughs> Jack. Uh, Jack, look there. What's that? Look who's coming out of the jungle. Where? Oh, doggone. Manuel. Manuel himself. You fellas got your guns? Right here in my hand. Well, keep them that way. It looks like we're going to have to shoot ourselves a high priest yet before we're done with this thing. <laughs> transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at the same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Fawson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie Orr, with Mercedes McCambridge as Sonny, and Sarah Fussell as Hermes. 
Seven million people are listening to I Love a Mystery. If each one of you who enjoy the adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie were to tell just one person that a new story of adventure begins on Monday, what a lot of new listeners that would be. Seven million times two is 14 million. And what a whale of an audience to launch the Battle of the Century. That's the new I Love a Mystery story beginning on Monday. The Battle of the Century with Miss Jack Dempsey Ross in this corner and Jack, Doc, and Reggie in the other corner. Be listening Monday for sure. This program came from New York. Frank McCarthy speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. I love a mystery. Adventure Thriller, Temple of Vampire. Six o'clock in the evening, with a crippled airplane somewhere in the jungle near Tropical Lake Nicaragua. Jack, Doc, and Reggie, working at top speed, have repaired the damaged undercarriage and are now in the process of straining the water gasoline which originally caused the crash landing in the isolated wilderness near the Temple of Vampires. Now that the great temple is completely destroyed under the violence of an earthquake, the sense of impending danger is gone. There is a lightness of spirit as the trio works at running the impure gasoline through chamois skin, while Sonny, helped by the boy Hermie, concocts and passes out an impromptu evening meal. Then suddenly a shadow blots out the gaiety, as out of the jungle stalks the figure of Manuel, high priest of the Temple of Vampires. As he comes slowly toward the group, Sonny and Hermie huddle close to the plane, while the three comrades stand ready, their weapons within easy reach. Reggie. Yes, Jack. Go over and stand with Sonny and Hermie. Quite. I can drop him easy from here, Jack. No. Wait. And all the time, us are thinking him and Angelina was killed in the temple when he fell in. Hold it. All right, Manuel. We've got you covered. Come on in. He's coming with his hands up. Uh-huh. Sonny. Look out for a trick. Hey. Look at his face. All right. That's close enough. Doc, go and frisk him. Here. I have no weapon. Doc will make sure. We thought you were killed when that temple fell in. No, I am not killed. Son, you sure look like you had a hard night of it. See? Now what about Angelina, the other priests of the temple? They are gone. Buried in that rock pile back in the jungle? See? Angelina, the acolytes, the sacred vampires. All the sacred bats, too, huh? That is so. Nope, he's not carrying a thing. All right, you can put your hands down. I am grateful. Now, so what are you doing here? I have no place to go. I am fugitive. Fugitive? Well, uh, what about all the Indian tribes in this neighborhood? I am fugitive from the Indians. Well, that's queer. I thought you were the high priest. What about their religion? Their religion is no more. With the fall of the Temple of Vampires, all is ended. Their medicine men say it is a sign. The medicine men have roused the Indians against me, the high priest. You mean the Indians are out to get you? See, they thirst for my blood. For many years they have given their tribesmen as human sacrifices to the sacred vampires. Now they want revenge. Well, now, ain't you in a pickle? Can't say as I blame them. But why do you come to us? It is only way. 
If you will not give me refuge, then I am the same as dead. Well, naturally, we're not going to let the Indians kill you. We can help you. You will take me with you? Well, sure we will. Now, wait a minute. But, but, look, looky, Jack. Hold it. Is this the truth, Manuel? You doubt the word of Manuel, the high priest? Yes. So? Well, what do you expect us to do with you? That I do not care. You will take me from this place... That is all I got. Uh-huh. Oh, we can do that, Jack. Uh, take him along and drop him off at a first stop for refueling. All right, Manuel. If you're in earnest, I'll tell you what we'll do. See? We can't get out until tomorrow morning sometime. Until then, you must let us tie you up. Tie me up? Yes. Just to show your good faith. I guess they do not understand. Well, for all I know, this may be some trick. If you mean what you say, you've got to let us keep you tied up until we're ready to take off. So? Well... You may tie me up. All right. Now you can have your choice. We'll either tie you in the plane or if you want to be outside, to that tree over there. Well, hey, not in the plane, Jack. It's hotter than the inside of a boy. That's up to Manuel. I prefer to be out in the open. Okay. Reggie? Coming. Doc, you and Reggie take him over and tie him to that tree. Okay. Did you say to tie him up? Yeah, come on. To the tree over yonder. Right now. Come along, Manuel. Hello, sir. Yes? Hmm? What's it all about? Well, I'm not sure. He says the Indians are after him. Really? Well, we see them? Indians? <laughs> well, I hope not. But why, Jack? What do the Indians want with him? Well, if he's telling the truth, we're witnessing the fall of a religion. The temple is a symbol. With the symbol gone, the religion's gone. Oh, well, that's it. Yes, and now they want the scalp of the head man. It's a sort of jungle revolution. And Manuel has come to us for help. That's what he says. You're not sure? No. Maybe a trick. So you and Hermie stick close. Oh, yes. Well, let's get back to filtering our gasoline. Time up tight. Don't worry about that. Hey, Jack. Uh, Manuel says he hasn't had anything to eat all day. Hungry, huh? Yeah, laying low and dodging Indians on his trail. Well, give me a can of tomatoes and a piece of chocolate. Shall I get them? Hermie? Yeah? You stay right here. Sure, only... No, only about it. You stick close by. And, Sonny, you see that he does. Yes, I will. Nothing for matter, is it? We don't know. And, Doc, here? Yeah? Don't get too far away from the plane. Keep your gun handy and don't take any chances with Manuel. You still think this is some kind of a trick? I don't know. But we're too near out of this mess to ball it up now. You're right there. Jack, there's another can of filtered gas to be emptied. All right, I'll be right there. Go ahead and feed him back. Okay. I'll be back to give you a hand in a minute. Sonny, you and Hermie stay right with me. Come on. Maybe we ought to build us a fort if the Indians are coming. And if the Indians were going to bother us, they'd have done it long ago. I hope you're right. Better hurry and empty that can. This other one's almost full. All right. <coughs> You stay right by Reggie, you two. What you got your pistol laying out beside you for, Reggie? Well, I can reach it in a hurry. Just when I thought all our troubles were over, and now this has to happen. Well, maybe a good thing. We were getting kind of careless, you know. It was on our toes. Hey, Jack! Jack, come here! I say. What's the matter, Doc? Come here, quick! Reggie, sit that. Watch out for Sonny and Hermie. I'm going to Doc. Right now, let us know what it is. Over here, by the tree where we're tied Manuel. What's the matter? Is he gone? I'll say he ain't gone. Here. Look here. What? Yeah. Yeah. An Indian arrow through his heart. Dead in his skunk. An Indian arrow through his heart. Looks like one of his Indian friends caught up with him. Yeah. So he was telling the truth. They were after him. Well, that's one passenger we ain't carrying away with us tomorrow. The end of vampire worship in this part of the world. <laughs> adjustment, and then you can turn it over again. Yes, yes, only 10 o'clock in the morning. We're all set to take off. Depends on what the motors do this time. Oh, Jiminy, let's hope. Yeah, I sure do like flying. All right, Jack, turn it over. Here she goes. There you are. How does that sound to your ears? Is it all right? Is it running all right? Purring like a kitten. Jack, yeah, got her a couple of times. All right. Shut her up. Hey, what did you stop it for? 
anything the matter? Mm, not at all. She's running beautifully. Well, then what are we waiting for? We've got to pick up our tools, close her up, get the ship in order. Will that take long? No longer than it'd take to hog tie hip. Throw up that stuff, Reggie. I'll pack it away. Reggie! Doc, go back in the luggage department and see if everything's tied down. Rigger, and you can take the ship. We're going to have a rough takeoff. We don't want anything flying around the cabin. All right, hand up the tools, Reggie. Can you reach them? Yep. How's the undercarriage looks this morning? I went up there with a fine group comb. Yeah. Holding up beautifully. Good. Yeah. Is that everything? That's all. All right, Sonny, get in your seat and buckle yourself in. What about me, Jack? <laughs> well, Doc will have to hold you on his lap like he did when he came down. Okay, but only while we're getting off the ground. Sure. After that, you can have the run of the ship. Jack. Hmm? Did you hear about Hermie and me? What's that? Well, last night we came to an understanding. Well, that's so? Uh-huh. Honey, do you want to tell him? Sure. Sonny's going to adopt me. She is? That's right. Honey and I have been through quite a lot together. We got things in common. She said she was an orphan, too. Well, I think that's great. Well, see, Wiz, why not? More money than I know what to do with. Nothing to tie me down. Yeah, Jenny's a swell kid. And Sonny's a swell girl. <laughs> well, may I be the first to congratulate you both. Thank you, kid. Yeah, well, thanks, fellas. Yeah, now, what's all this? Well, Sonny and Hermie have just filed notice of intention. Huh? Oh? What's that mean? Yes, sir. They're, they're going to adopt each other. Well, what do you know? The man. Sure. Love at first sight. You mm. know what I like about you, Sonny? No, what's that? You ain't a kitten girl. <laughs> Not a kitten girl. <laughs> I hate being kissed worse than anything. <laughs> okay, Jack, everything's tied down back here in the luggage compartment. All right, come on up front. Everybody fasten himself in his seat. That's right. There's some rough ground ahead along shoreline. No regulation runway and no joke about that. <sighs> there. All right, come on, Hermie. Let me get a good hold on you. All ready back there? All set. Close the door, Reggie. Hello? All All tightened your clip. And here we go. Running like a sewing machine. Give us a gun, Jack. Adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you Monday at this same hour. Eyes of a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morris, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thornton as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York, with Mercedes McCambridge as Sonny, Louis Van Ruten as Manuel, and Sarah Fussell as Herbie. adventure back in the United States. Then listen for The Battle of the Century, coming Monday. That's Jack, Doc, and Reggie in Battle of the Century, an hilarious, two-fisted, joyous new thriller, and I Love a Mystery, Socceroo.
the Mutual Broadcasting System. Thanks for listening to this week's Retro Radio, Old Time Radio in the Dark. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so you don't miss future episodes. And if you like the show, please share it with someone you know who also loves old time radio and pulp audio. If you want to hear even more, drop an email to WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com and get an instant reply with links to download full length pulp audiobooks, pulp ebooks, and old time radio shows absolutely free. That's WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com. I'm Darren Marlar. I'll see you next time for Retro Radio, old-time radio in the dark. Retro.